And probably a good tempo of play. I watched Holland, I watched Brazil. They play at a high tempo with great quality. And now that's what England haven't been able to do. Well, the uh, referee from Algeria, Jamal Hamoudi, uh, has blown his whistle. We're underway here in beautiful Belo Horizonte. Uh, there are some fluffy white clouds overhead, but it's a, it's a mainly blue sky. I don't know what the temperature is, but if this is winter, we'll take this. England all in white today. Uh, Costa Rica in their red shirts, blue shorts and red socks. And it's 23 degrees centigrade. And it says on Alistair Yeoman's phone, he's our producer, it's a sunny day. <laughs> Confirmed. You're listening to Five Live, your World Cup station, because whatever happens to England, and we know they're going home, uh, we'll be following everything that matters in Brazil 2014, taking you through to the climax in the Maracanã Stadium. Oh, it's about three weeks away, something like that. So, England are playing, I think, a 4-3-3, Danny. I think it's where you, clearly a back four. 4-4-1-1, four, four, one, one, perhaps, maybe. Uh, maybe. Adam Milan on the left-hand side. Um, Milner's playing in a central position at the moment. But I, th I think uh, it, it will change slightly, but I think maybe it's a 4-4-1-1, a four, four, one, one, um, as we talked about, maybe packing that midfield um, a little bit more, giving it a little bit of protection. Uh, Wilshire and Lampard in the centre, uh, Milner on the, on the right-hand side, uh, and Barkley just off Sturridge. Uh, ben Foster drilled the clearance high towards Lallana, who headed on towards Sturridge, but it's cleared by Costa Rica. And then Costa Rica pick up possession. Brenes into Campbell, just outside the England penalty. His shot takes a deflection, and it's wide. Or did it take a deflection? And they've awarded a goal kick. I think Costa Rica are right to complain. I think they should have had a corner there. I can't believe that's not been given as a corner. It comes off the back of, of Gary Cahill. Clear deflection. How the referees missed that, I don't know. But already you can see Costa Rica, a team with confidence. They're zipping the ball around, letting to get the ball and make things happen. England look a little bit nervous, uh, a little bit jittery at the moment. Uh, no surprise there, unfortunately, given what's happened here. But who would have expected Costa Rica to beat Uruguay and Italy? Phenomenal performance from the Central American side. England have the ball, though, on the far side of the field. And now it's slipped to the left side towards Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw is the future at left back. We hope, we think. Shaw plays it to his club colleague, uh, Lalana. Close to the corner flag, and then Lalana runs it out of play, and it will be a throw in to Costa Rica. They were comfortably runners up in their CONCACAF group to the United States. But it's one thing to be tight defensively, they've got so many players based in so-called mediocre clubs overseas. No one can have expected Costa Rica to have played this well in what was allegedly the group of death. It was a very, very tough group. Uh, I said at the beginning, Costa Rica will come up with a surprise against somebody. I didn't think it would be against two teams. Uh, I thought they, you know, they, they could pull off a result. It always happens in World Cups. You know, you think when Cameroon sort of first joined in the World Cup, you know, that naivety sometimes you know, does nick you a goal and nick you a result. I'm more concerned today about England. I'm looking for a style of play, uh, a way of moving forward. You know, what sort of game are England going to take? You know, we've talked about philosophy. Well, I want to see what the philosophy is. You know, is it going to be a, a slow passing game, possession game? Is it going to be more dynamic, get the ball forward uh, quickly and, or play, play on the counter-attack? Frank Lampard winning his 106th and final cap for his country today. What a great servant he's been as well. Sure. Back now to Chris Smalling. Smalling uh, then chips it straight out of play and he wasn't, wasn't under any pressure. That's poor. Throw into Costa Rica, just short of the halfway line, near side of the field. Not a good start from Smalling there. That, that, that'll do him no confidence at all. You know, first few moments in a game, you want to have a good touch, you want to get hold of the ball, you know, a couple of simple passes, you're a defender, get a header, a tackle. You know, something like that. When you give the ball away, it plays on your mind for the next five or ten minutes. Well, from the throw-in that was squandered by Costa Rica, um, it was given away uh, by Wilshire for England, and now Costa Rica have a free kick. And it's played towards the far side of the field, uh, towards Diaz, and now it comes to the right side again. Duarte, one of the three central defenders, he's up uh, towards the halfway line. Into the captain, 
Brian Ruiz on loan from Fulham to PSV Eindhoven. And now the play switches to the far side again. And the ball played deep into the England penalty area. Uh, too deep, thankfully. And it's over the crossbar and behind for the goal kick. But England haven't started well. It's just a little bit too easy for Costa Rica at the moment. England have got to get tighter. You've got to put pressure on the ball. The, the player who's got the ball under control, you've got to get close enough to get his head down. And I'm sorry, but in this stage, you know, two or three yards isn't close enough. You've got to get within a yard of a player to affect him because players are better than they used to do. If you give a player two or three yards, as you see there, they can ping the ball all over the place. Uh, England, of course, have been far from good during this World Cup, but I do, I do think that results have been worse than performances. Some things have just gone against them when they badly needed to go for them. Now they're on the attack on the far side of the field and it breaks down as Milner loses possession and it's drilled towards uh, Ruiz, the captain, Ruiz. Tackle, loses it to Luana, uh, Lalana rather. And uh, then, as, uh, is that Welsh you're down again? Yeah, he just got caught on a, on a follow-through in the back. But this is the problem, I think, with Jack Wilshire. He, he goes down after nearly every single and challenge. And he immediately looks hurt. Immediately looks hurt. He's holding, he's clutching his, the back of his right thigh at the moment, but he's out of the game at the moment too. Six minutes gone here in Belo Horizonte. I know it's wrong, Alan, but it's the sort of play you'd be thinking, you know what, if I get the chance, I'm going to get a decent tackling early on. You know, possibly leave a little bit on him, you know, and see how he reacts to that. Campbell takes the ball and then he gives it away. And Wilshire, uh, restored to health, we think. Back to Lalana, deep inside his own half. Lalana uh, switches into the far side of the field. That was cut out immediately by Diaz. And then one back by England, but the foot was a bit high, uh, according to the Algerian referee, and it's a free kick to Costa Rica. Probably get away with that in the Premier League. Phil Jones just came in, studs showing. Both players went for the ball, uh, but Diaz had his foot, his studs pointing downwards. Jones, the studs pointing up, and as we've all seen in European international football, that's always likely to be a free kick. Now Campbell, the Arsenal player, who's on loan to Olympiacos, he'll take the free kick. It's about 40 yards of the England goal, slightly to the left as he plays it in left-footed, straight into the grateful hands of Ben Foster. And Foster throws it out to Shaw, and Shaw surges towards the halfway line, chips it over the halfway line. Barkley's there, the first touch from Barkley. Not great, but he played it off a Costa Rican player, and it's out of uh, Diaz for a throw into England, deep inside the Costa Rican half. In the small sliver of shadow cast by the roof of this stadium Shaw throws it back into the sunshine back towards Smalling, just over the halfway line, Smalling hits it to the far side to his Manchester United colleague, Jones Jones uh, pass forward uh, to Sturridge it was awfully difficult for Sturridge to take but he was fouled anyway by Roy Miller and it's a free kick to England it's taking a play to Wilshire so it's fired in really hard into Sturridge's feet from Phil Jones almost had no chance to control that and fortunate I think to, to get the free kick in the end here's Wilshire following the free kick and that's uh, a pass over hit well beyond Sturridge bounces through uh, to Navas the goalkeeper I mean, he's one of a, a number of uh, goalkeepers in this World Cup Danny that are unknown basically to a British audience on Five Live but this guy is looking for a new club he, I gather he quite wants to play in England and he is really good well I think there'll be lots of players from the so-called lesser nations um, if you like that we don't know too much about around the world those players putting themselves in the shop window it's always a little bit of a risk if you buy somebody off the back of a tournament when it's only you know, possibly two or three good games um, but it's certainly an opportunity for them to be watched again uh, Ajaccio uh, Achor rather he plays for Ajaccio in France He's another one, the Mexican goalkeeper, who is looking for a move, and he's outstanding. Throw into Costa Rica, launched towards the halfway line, headed back by Luana, in by Lampard. Barkley heads it to Wilshire, into Barkley again. His pass was aimed at Lampard, it was slightly overhead, but it's collected by Cahill. Cahill to Shaw, England settling down, nine minutes gone here in Bel Horizonte. Nil-nil, Costa Rica and England. Uh, Wilshire tackle, loses the ball. Costa Rica cleared upfield in the direction of Campbell, but it's ahead of the striker, and it's through to Ben Foster, who quickly finds Small. And on Val Lampard to the near side, the England left, and Shaw. Shaw curls it inside, but that's behind Sturridge, headed away quite comfortably by Miller, but now it's back with Sturridge again, to the right of the penalty area. Not many white shirts in support. Sturridge has the ball, though. And moving inside, towards the edge of the penalty area. 
Plays it to Wilshire. Back to Lampard. Lampard couldn't get the ball out from under his feet. Loses possession. And Costa Rica counter-attack. Though they slow things down now. Just over the halfway line. The ball hit towards the near side of the field. Towards uh, Campbell. Campbell now. In towards the penalty area. Or was he fouled there? Play continues and then the offside flag is raised. And they're a little unlucky there. Costa Rica not to get a free kick. Yeah, it was a really good move. Uh, again, this time it was Luke Shaw. A little bit exposed uh, down England's left-hand side in a two-on-one situation. Joel Campbell decided to go inside. It was a great little one-two on the edge of the box and England are a little bit fortunate. I think it's a, a big game for Gary Cahill. He's really got to marshal that defence. Uh, and I think that, that experience will do him well. You know, he is now the, the senior member of that defence. It's nil-nil here in Belo Horizonte. I'm assuming it's still nil-nil between Italy and Uruguay in the other game. And it is nil-nil. And uh, the reason that's, frankly, of great importance, of course, is that uh, if Italy get a draw or a win, then they will go through. Uruguay have to win the match. Conor McNamara is there. Yeah, still nil-nil between Italy and Uruguay and the Italians knowing that this scoreline would see them through. Pat Nevin, they're parking about two buses on the edge of the penalty area. Yeah, it's a word that we haven't used a great deal in this World Cup so far, certainly about the, the play, and it's the word cynical. There's a lot of cynical fellows out there, a very cynical-looking game, particularly from the Italians, but let's be honest, a bit from the Uruguayans as well. Yeah, Suarez has been kicked by Barzagli, Chiellini has been elbowed in the chest. It's a real fight here in Natal. It's Italy nil, Uruguay nil. It will be. Uh, amazingly, uh, some of the coverage here in Brazil is rather narrow-minded. Of course, we've got a presence in Natal, but I would have assumed that one of the many uh, pictures we have on our television sets would have shown us uh, live coverage of Uruguay's. In fact, Mark Pugac has got it. We haven't got it up here, Mark. Use, use, use it. error, I think, Alan, this might be. Oh, is it really? Might, what, might a, what a shame. Here's Wiltshire coming forward for England. The storage edge of the D. Oh, just wide. Left foot shot. Curled just wide of the far post. Again, individual brilliance from Daniel Sturridge. He's just had a glance up um, at the big screen, looking to the, look the replay, see how far it was away. Stop the ball. Instinctive shot with his left foot curling towards the far post, just drifted wide in the end. But so far, I'm not quite sure what style of play England are. You know, it's not really playing on the counter-attack, it's not high tempo getting forward, it's not, not pass, 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 pass. It's a, I, I want to see a, a bit more definition to their style. Quickly to the cricket, Pat Murphy at Headingley. We're waiting for a decision about Chris Jordan. He may well be out. He survived um, a TV review half an hour or so ago, but the original decision from the umpire Steve Davis is that he is out. The score is 212 for seven, and the overs are ticking by here now, and Jordan is out. He's been given out. It's now 212 for eight. There are 28 overs left, and Sri Lanka only need two more wickets. Thanks, Pat, whose voice, like England, are just about hanging on there. 13 minutes gone here in Belo Horizonte. Costa Rica nil. England nil, and just to confirm it's still Italy nil, Uruguay nil in Natal. Ball's on the halfway line with Campbell for Costa Rica. The England fans, I gather, are singing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. Well, I think they've probably got over their disappointment now of, of those two games. Uh, you have to remember, you know, they are in Brazil, fantastic place to be, you know, great food, uh, great drink, um, great views all around the country. Um, so I think, you know, they're, they're just here now. They're going to enjoy what little time left they have in Brazil. Danny Mills speaking from personal experience there. England not looking that good so far. You'd, you'd have seen it on your Mexican telly if you could way. get it working, Alan. It wasn't there earlier. That's enough said about that. Cahill to Smalling. And Smalling to the left side and Shaw on the halfway line. Shaw was caught there, but he, his miss control didn't help him and then that's a weak pass forward by Wilshire and Costa Rica have possession again on the far side of the field with Diaz who plays for Mainz in the Bundesliga uh, a Mexican wave has broken out around the stadium and we haven't had a quarter of an hour of the game yet and that's a cross field ball hit by Costa Rica straight out of play uh, it's a throw in to England Shaw's going to take it not a sniff of a goal bound effort yet Apart from that shot from Sturridge that wasn't that far wide. Shaw to take the throw in, 20 yards inside the Costa Rican half. He ignores Wiltshire. 
throws to Sturridge instead. Sturridge back to Shaw. Wilshire's available down the left side. Uh, Shaw moves in field. Uh, naively loses possession. And it's with Bran Ruiz. Bran Ruiz glides into the far side. Campbell controls it. Campbell now looking for Diaz. Keeps possession for the moment. Now he finds Diaz on the far touch line. That's the Costa Rican left. Infield it goes. Then Diaz once more. Back to Roy Miller. And Miller finds Gonzalez, one of the three central defenders. Here's another of them now. Duarte, who plays for Club Bruges. Back to Gonzalez, who plays in the MLS for Columbus Crew. Switches play toward the far side of the field. Well anticipated by Jones. He heads it out. And it's going to be a throw into Costa Rica just beyond the halfway line. Nil-nil here, still nil-nil in Natal between Italy and Uruguay. And let's uh, go to Ian Dennis on the touchline. Alan, it might be a dead rubber, but England's support here, sitting pitch side for five live, is fantastic. They have had a rendition of always look on the bright side of life. Instead of football's coming home, England's going home, but they're not very popular with the rest of the fans inside this stadium because they're refusing to take part in the Mexican way. As I would... They're absolutely right. Uh, Ruiz uh, for Costa Rica. Uh, exchanges passes with Takeda. And uh, now Campbell loses it for Costa Rica. It's not a great game of football, this. Uh, now there was that pass out of the England defence by Smalling, straight out of play on the far side of the field. Costa Rican throw in. Costa Rica, arguably, just, just slightly the better side at the moment. Here's Duarte. And it's uh, quickly flicked on uh, by Borges. And it's run over the halfway line now, down the near side of the field with Campbell for Costa Rica. Campbell still not considered good enough to be playing for Arsenal, although he is on the Arsenal books. Back to Bran Ruiz, who scored that winning goal against Italy. His pass forward, not great. Lampard clears it. Lalana still inside his own half. The Sturridge in the centre circle. Sturridge was surely fouled there. He was at the second attempt by Roy Miller. And it's a free kick awarded by the Algerian referee. It's a little bit disjointed at the moment. Uh, in terms of the, the England play. Again, a little bit understandable. These players haven't played an awful lot together. My biggest concern, I'd be interested and we'll see what Chris Waddle thinks. We've talked about philosophy, uh, how England will play going forward. We've talked about identity. I don't think England have either at the moment. I don't know what the philosophy or the style of play is, and I don't know what our identity is. Once upon a time, you think England, strong defensively, difficult to beat, will work really, really hard, good from set pieces. Now I look at this team and I don't know what England is. I don't know what we are going to, what style of play we're supposed to be playing. Is that Hodgson's fault? I'm not sure whose fault it is. I don't know whether it's, you know, part of Hodgson, part of the players, uh, you know, part of the bigger picture. That's what we need Here's to do. Here's Sturridge, left foot volley, just tipping over the crossbar. Didn't get down quickly enough, but at least uh, at twice now, Sturridge has been looking at goal. Well, the two half chances that Sturridge have had have been moments that he's created himself. He's got the ball, he's done a little step over, a little skill, and he's had a shot. It's not like we are creating chances by good build-up play, or we get the ball wide, we get the ball into the box, as you know, when, when Shearer, you know, once played, that was, and Waddle was on the wing. That's what it was all about. I'm just looking at England at the moment, and it's just an OK game of football. There's no real purpose about anything. Campbell, back to the halfway line, and then it's swung towards the far side of the field by Decada. Uh, headed on by, initially by Diaz, but cleared by England, high over the halfway line. Only Sturridge is up there. I mean, look, there's not an England player within 40 yards of Daniel Sturridge. I thought we were down to play 4-3-3 today. That was certainly the suggestion made by Roy Hodgson. Haven't seen much evidence of it yet. But England have a throw-in on the far side of the field, level with the edge of the Costa Rican penalty area. Sturridge needs rather more support than he's getting. It's yeah. one thing tightening up the midfield. Well, it's a 4-4-1-1, and Barkley's almost drifted into that midfield area at times and, and making it a 4-5-1, a if you like. I mean, he needs to get a little bit closer to Daniel Sturridge and give him some support. Uh, lots of white shirts inside the Costa Rican half at the moment. Here's Shaw, 19 minutes gone. Nil-nil here in Belo Horizonte to Frank Lampard, edge of the D. Lampard to Sturridge. Sturridge tries to back heel the ball to Lampard again only met by a defender though and cleared up towards Campbell it's out of play off Campbell and it will be a throw in to England uh, you're listening to 5 Live your World Cup station on the BBC Brazil 2014 England finished today we don't finish it's with Gary Cahill one of just two players retained uh, by Roy Hodgson in the starting 11 from the side that lost to Uruguay back it goes to Ben Foster 
I wonder when Forster come on as a substitute uh, sometime in the second half, if not at half time. The Celtic goalkeeper. Now, Milner on the far side turns away well from the marker, feeds it through towards Sturge. Final touch back by the defender, not uh, seen as a, an intended back pass, so the goalkeeper can grab the ball with both, both hands. Navas. 20 minutes gone, Costa Rica nil, England nil. It's still nil nil in Natal. England haven't really built up a purposeful attack yet, have they? You know, it really is just uh, Costa Rica give the ball away or Sturridge gets it, turns and, and shoots. There's been no build-up of play, no sort of momentum gathering uh, from England. It's really been, I think, Costa Rica um, that are dictating the, the, the style and the tempo of play at the moment. And uh, Conor McNamara will just confirm that it's nil-nil in Natal. Yes, Alan, still scoreless here between Italy and Uruguay. An exciting game, though, so much at stake for both sides. Pirlo's had a shot from distance. It caused more trouble for the Uruguay goalkeeper than it should have done. He fumbled it over for a corner. It's Italy nil, Uruguay nil. Now Costa Rica have a free kick. Uh, it was a pushover by uh, Frank Lampard, the captain today, in the absence of Steven Gerrard. Gerrard, of course, available on the bench. At the moment, he's stuck on 113 caps for England. That's two behind the outfield record. Uh, held by David Beckham Costa Rica chipped the ball over the halfway line running towards uh, Brenes but not controlled by him half cleared by England then that looked like a push and it was a push and it's going to be a free kick to England taken and played to Milner Milner goes uh, back to Jones and then into Cahill on to Smalling Wiltshire available Wiltshire not really forward enough for my liking now he's here from Lalana's pass Wiltshire into the Costa Rican half. Shaw into Lalana, couldn't control it, and Costa Rica have it. Bren is in the centre circle. Red shirts uh, congregated around that centre circle, but there's another one towards this near side. That's Gamboa, the right wing back. On to Campbell, back to Gamboa, and into Decada. Uh, to Ruiz, the captain. Good touch by Campbell. Plays a 1 2. Campbell goes forward, uh, falls over because he was stripped, and it's a free kick to Costa Rica. And that's the difference, I think, between the two sides. Costa Rica playing with confidence, you know, quite happy to be patient, you know, keep the ball in the middle of the park, keep it moving, one, two touch, and, and just wait for opportunities. When they see a gap, they burst into it, and because of that, they've now got a free kick, probably 25, 30 yards from goal. It can be, well, have to be a fantastic strike from that distance, I think, to, to test the goalkeeper. By the way, B Balotelli of Italy just been booked in the match in Natal, and he will miss... Uh, the game in the last 16 should Italy qualify. I wish that chance still lingered for England. Meantime, it's a free kick to Costa Rica. It's a goal-threatening distance. It's around about 25 yards, maybe a fraction more. Here comes the shot, right-footed, up and goodness, it either hit the top of the crossbar or it was saved by Foster. It's gone behind. Either way, it's going to be a corner uh, to Costa Rica and we're past the midway point in the first half. Here's Mike Ingham at nil nil. I think, sorry, Mike, I think Ben Foster might have just got a touch on this, just trying to see the replay again as it comes in. He did, just touches it onto the bar. I think it probably would have hit the bar anyhow uh, and now there's a corner, but a, a great save. Well, the referee initially appeared to give a goal kick and then had a little think. It's a corner kick to Costa Rica. It's nil nil here against England. The corner kick over on the far side and Lampard scuffs it away. And Barkley comes on a break and is immediately caught in possession. Campbell now moving forward for Costa Rica. There's danger on the edge of the England penalty area. Ruiz finding Campbell. Some of the defenders have stayed forward following that corner and they've got another one. That was a prime example of Barkley being young and naive and making the wrong decision. England were looking to, to counter-attack and he tried to beat a player, you know, just knock it, he just knocked it into him. Didn't do a trick, didn't move the ball sideways. It should have passed it and then moved and gone around the player that way. Another corner to Costa Rica, over on the far side, and Foster comes for it and holds onto it very well, but there's nobody to give it to. That's exactly what Roy Hodgson was talking about earlier in the tournament about Ross Barkley. It's, a, it's an awkward game, this, for Costa Rica, in a sense, and that they don't obviously want to get up any yellow cards, they, so they can't be over-vigorous. Mark Pugac has already mentioned if they get the draw, they'll win the group. So they're playing sometimes within themselves as well. 
Well, the biggest skill in football, Mike, is making the right decision. You know, you ask any of those players down there, under no pressure, yes, they can all pass it five yards, 50 yards, 60 yards, they can all shoot at goal, they can do all of those things, but the skill is making the right decision at the right time, and when you're young, uh, sometimes you make the wrong ones. Lampard has hoisted a very good ball over the top, and uh, there's a mistake here inside the penalty area, which almost led in Jack Wilshire. Costa Rica in the shadow of the stand looking to clear down this near side, and uh, that ball has eventually gone out of play. We're in sunny Belo Horizonte, and it's nil-nil between Costa Rica and England, it's nil-nil between Italy and Uruguay, and uh, if the scorelines stay like this, then Costa Rica win the group and Italy would finish second, but still an awful long way to go on five live. Um, England all in white today, led by Frank Lampard, equaling Sir Bobby Charlton's 106 caps. He'd love to score today to get his 30th goal for England and the free kick is almost a mess there by England now it's played down the right hand side towards Phil Jones Jones gets support from Daniel Sturridge Lallana's has made a run into the penalty area Sturridge has given the ball away and Brennis now for Costa Rica up to Campbell back again to Brennis and that's a bit short towards Ruiz but it's a great flick to find Campbell Smalling just backs off and then Smalling will tidy up for England and he'll remember of course Campbell playing for Olympiacos in the Champions League against Manchester United this season. Ball into the Costa Rica half, and Lalana now has gone into the centre. Wasn't getting much of the ball at all down this left-hand side. And England building, although now it's Lampard looking it forward in hope, really, towards Sturridge. Out comes the goalkeeper, Navas. I, I was very interested in what you were saying, Danny, about the identity, because it just seems to me now that England seem to be caught between two, two or three stills. They've almost forgotten what they're good at, and they're trying to be other teams. Well, they've they just gone out there, and they're just sort of passing the ball around no real direction, no real purpose. If England are going to score at the moment, it's going to be a moment of individual brilliance from Daniel Sturridge, or it's going to be a, a catastrophic mistake uh, from a Costa Rican. That's it. Well, Costa Rican have given the ball away, and Daniel Sturridge has the ball with Barkley to the right-hand side. Walsh has made a run in the area. Barkley's getting a little bit tangled up here on the edge of the area, but he's riding the challenges. Good play from Barkley. Now he slots it up for James Milner. This ball should come into the penalty area for England. Milner scoops the ball in, headed down to Sturridge. Sturridge has a chance, and look, he thinks he was brought down some seven yards out. He's looking at the referee, but there's nothing for England there. And England should have scored. They shouldn't have been looking for the penalty. Without looking at the replay, I'm going to say that's good defending. The cross was a little bit slow to come in. And then there was two Costa Ricans challenged each other. It dropped to Sturridge. And as he came in, uh, it's Duarte. Just got his body in. Just did enough to put off Sturridge. Got his body in between Sturridge and the ball. That's good defending. You know, brave in that situation. Could have easily given away a penalty. But no, Daniel Sturridge has got to be a little bit sharper, a little bit quicker, get his shot away. Danny Mills, Wilson, 5 live, 0 nil between Costa Rica and England. Here come, now comes the captain of Costa Rica, Brian Ruiz. He's been tackled by Lampard. And now Barkley picks up possession and knocks it really long to the far side. And Sturridge will have to give up on that one. The intent was right, but the delivery wasn't. And Costa Rica, who, by the way, had an appalling build-up coming into this World Cup. They really didn't do well at all in their friendly matches, but they've found themselves in a group with three former world champions. They've beaten two of them already. Italy and Uruguay, now they're trying to make it a hat-trick here today. Throw into Costa Rica, who plays three at the back, and they have the wing-backs. One or two teams doing that, this World Cup. Chile also playing with three central defenders. And Chile are through to play Brazil in the last 16. Ball is back in the England half. And Cahill now finds Lampard, nil-nil. Back again to Cahill. England haven't created very much, they've... Um, they swapped over, now they have it. Yes, they have swapped over Milner and Lalana just for the moment. Milner's playing down this near side, the left, Lalana over on the right. It's still quite a disjointed game, though, Danny, isn't it? There's not much flow about it. None at all. You see, Costa Rica really dictating it. They're happy for a slow paced game just to keep the ball. But England just haven't troubled their defence at all. You know, and it's a, I'm surprised at that. There's young players. It's a, this is a great opportunity for some of those young players to go out and really put down a marker and say, look, one, I should have been in the starting eleven, you know, in, in the first two games, or moving forward, I'm part of this England team, I want to play in this side, I want to go to the Euros, I want to go to the next World Cup. Yeah, because those Euro qualifying games will come around very, very quickly. Long board out of the Costa Rican defence by Diaz, over on the far side, it's Brennis against Jones, and the Manchester United player heads the ball out for a Costa Rica throwing, nil-nil here in Belo Horizonte. 
Costa Rica throw the ball back. It's Diaz, the left wing back, into midfield. Costa Rica now playing the ball into feet. Lovely little flick from Ruiz, but this time England managed to get hold of it. Milner sets off down this near side. Someone needs to help him, though. He's, he's running with the ball, and there's nobody offering themselves really. Jack Wilshere goes past the first challenge, wins the free kick. He wasn't really going anywhere there, Jack Wilshere, so he's done well to win the free kick. That's a really good point you've just picked on, Mike. When England players get the ball, they've got one option. There's only one player that really wants it, or they've only got one player to pass to. You need three or four options, um, you know, if, if you're going to play well and keep the ball moving very, very quickly. Free kick is touched off short, and um, it's down this left-hand side with Luke Shaw. Shaw, a very strong challenge coming in from Gamboa, the right back. England still pressing, Lampard's doing well here, has to be careful to do it legally. And now Shaw uh, gives the ball away and... Well, the goalkeeper came out, but the defender ignored him and now hammers the ball towards Ruiz, who can't control it on the halfway line, but now he has a second opportunity. Barkley tangles with Ruiz, but that's so... Oh, fantastic skill on the ball from Brian Ruiz, turning brilliantly away from England players. Ball played into the centre, and now it's offside against Brennis. The pass was just delayed as England just nudged forward out of defence, and it's a free kick to England, nil-nil. Brilliant bit of skill from Brian Ruiz to get away from uh, Wilshire initially. I, well, Maradona spin, um, it was called in in my day, uh, but superb. But England at the moment need to start playing with a higher tempo. But that is the biggest problem. Every time that Cam has got the ball now, he's got one option and he's had to go back to the goalkeeper. England have got to work harder when they've got possession. They've got to be tactically more aware, get themselves in a position to receive the ball. And Brian Ruiz, of course... Sent out on loan by Fulham to PSV in the way that Campbell was by Arsenal to Olympiacos. We're just going to watch Milner give chase uh, towards the corner flag and now we'll hear more news of that Uruguay-Italy game from Conor McNamara. Yeah, still Italy nil, Uruguay nil. A draw good enough for Italy, remember. Uruguay need a win to be sure. It's tense and it's physical here and Balotelli's booking means he'll be suspended for the second round should Italy get there. Uruguay looking dangerous on the break with Suarez, but Pat Nevin alongside Italy are organised at the back with their three central defenders. They are, they're going to be really hard to break down, but the best thing that's happened for me in the last 10-15 minutes, Pirlo, like a quarterback, has dropped into the pocket and is zipping the ball about all over the place. He is controlling this game. A draw, nil-nil, would be good enough for Italy. Uruguay have to win to be sure. Italy nil, Uruguay nil. Thank you. The, I mean, nil-nil is also good enough here for Costa Rica to win the group, and that's the scoreline here as Lampard hits a long ball forward, and that's lovely running from Adam Lallana towards the corner flag over on the far side. Uh, in comes the cross, it takes a deflection, and England have a rare corner. Corner kick to England with 32 minutes gone in the first half here in Belo Horizonte. And now let's see a lot of England set pieces in the previous two games were very disappointing. Can they do something here, Dan? That's really been down to the delivery, uh, which surprised. Stephen Gerrard's delivery wasn't as good as it normally was. Leighton Baines' delivery as well. You know, it, it, set pieces are all about the ball in. You know, it doesn't matter how tall your players are, how good they are in the air. If the delivery is not right, uh, it's a complete waste. Well, Barkley thought the corner was down this left-hand side, but he's been made to go across to the right, into the sunshine over on the far side, and England's central defenders are all in the penalty area, away to our left. Cahill. Smalling and Jones. Um, oh, that was a false alarm from Barkley. He seemed to shape up to take the corner, then ran over the ball. Yeah, was, the lines were just stepped right. in front of him. It was Cahill and Duarte at the far post, just having a little bit of a, a coming together. Corner kick to England. 0 0 against Costa Rica in this final game for them in the World Cup. Barkley raises both arms and then the ball balloons off the defender, who I'm not sure he was 10 yards but it's gone behind for another corner kick and we get a replacement ball immediately. But this is what I'm talking about, Mike. You know, Barkley's got the corner. You know, this is something that you practice, your delivery from set pieces, and he's hit a player 10 yards in front of him. Well, Sturridge is being <laughs> manhandled at the moment inside the six-yard area as the corner kick is delivered and it was almost an opportunity for Gary Cahill who came diving in and a certain amount of panic at the back there from Costa Rica. They've forced the ball behind for another corner and now Barkley has come to the right side of the stadium to take this corner. And England still have an opportunity here. With uh, Cahill causing a few problems in the penalty area. Smalling and Jones as well. So Ross Barkley starting a World Cup game here in Belo Horizonte with this England corner. 0-0 against Costa Rica. Sturridge is still um, being lent on by one of the Costa Rican defenders as the corner kick is lifted very high to the far post. Headed down and then headed over by... 
Daniel Sturridge in the end. Well, they had three corners there, England. They couldn't force it home, and Sturridge couldn't control his header and put it down. It's gone behind. Let's go to David Law at Wimbledon. Where yeah, Rafael Nadal is a relieved man because although he lost the first set 6 4 against Martin Clizan, he's come back to win the next three by the scoreline of 6 3, and now faces another clash against Lucas Rossell, the man who knocked him out in the second round two years ago. Thank you very much. We're four hours behind you here in Belo Horizonte. We're coming towards the final stages of the first half. Ten minutes to go. England nil, Costa Rica nil. It's still Uruguay nil, Italy nil. So with these scorelines at the moment, Costa Rica would win the group with Italy finishing second. Ball is with Costa Rica inside the England half. Ruiz is there, just finding space. Campbell back again to Ruiz. They seem to have a good understanding, those two. Back into midfield, and now the highly rated Takeda. The young man, just 22 years of age, who's making an impression here at the World Cup. Costa Rica give the ball away. Very tight for England in midfield. Short from Wilshire, but Lampard now has managed to scoop it down this left-hand side. Milner, who's a really good athlete, is there on the ball. Lallana and Sturridge in the penalty area. Now can Milner cross this towards Sturridge or Lallana? Great goalkeeping. Fantastic from Navas. And uh, he really, as Alan was saying earlier, is earning himself quite a reputation in Spain. Yeah, it's a really good take. James Milner did very, very well, not only to catch the ball down this side, but then to dig out a, a decent cross uh, on his left foot, you know, which is a weaker side. Again, no real purpose from England. That's what I've been most disappointed about. You know, this is a young side. Go and play with some pride. Put in some effort. This is the last game of a World Cup. OK, they're out of the tournament, but deal with it. Move on. You know, we talk about a, a fresh start. We talk about, you know, moving on from here. I've not seen anything to really impress me from a single England player well, as that's yet. That's given away by Costa Rica in midfield. Lam uh, Lampard has won the ball and now Lampard finds Barkley. Wilsh has made a run if he can find him, but it's just ahead of him and out comes the keeper once more. The final pass there from Barkley, not the one that Wilsh wanted. By the way, Prince Harry's here today and I've noticed uh, quite a few young ladies in the stadium are offering to marry him, holding up the flags, saying, marry, marry me, Harry. So he's watching on and... Uh, will obviously be disappointed like all the other England supporters that England are at this stage. It was two years ago today, by the way, they lost to Italy on penalties in the quarter-final of the Euros. And ten years ago today, they lost to Portugal on penalties in the quarter-final of 2004. They haven't got to the quarter-final or a penalty shootout this time around. So let's go and rejoin Ian Dennis in the sunshine down there, pitch side. Yeah, wilting in the heat here, Mike. The only observation I'd say pitch side is that with the exception of Milner, who's now switched to the left in Milano when he just peeled away a few minutes before, in the central midfield areas for England, there is a real lack of movement that I've noticed in comparison to the Costa Rica side. And I've also got to add, the England support behind me is unwavering. Thank you. Well, I mean, the thing is, Danny, many of the fans would have, would have, will be here for the first time. They probably haven't been to the first two games. This is their package and they've come out here. And they're just um, going to make the most of it, aren't they? But again, just to reiterate what, what Ian says and what he's looking at, you know, Ross Barkley's on the ball now. Where's his options? Yeah. Where are the players moving? You should have two, at least two, three options every time you get the ball. Because if not, it's predictable and it's easy to play against. And that's exactly what's happening to England at the moment. Lallana is really still struggling to make an impact here. He's operating on the right-hand side at the moment, not really influencing the game. It just goes to show, though, Mike, what a step up international football is to Premier League. You know, from, from Premier League to uh, international, it's probably three steps on the ladder. You know, I suppose halfway between that is maybe Champions League. Uh, but even still, you know, internationally, it's way beyond the Premier League. Well, Costa Rica have just dreadfully given the ball away, but can it, are England going to be good enough here to take advantage? Because Costa Rica, for the most part here, are on the back foot. They're just happy with what they have. They know they haven't got to do anything too reckless. They certainly mustn't get any cards, like we've just heard about Balotelli now, if Italy go through being out of the game in the last 16. So, England with Frank Lampard. Lampard, that's a good ball for sure. Hasn't really got forward very much sure. Now to James Milner. Milner is being tackled and the ball is with Costa Rica and Takeda's there. And he's going to use Campbell's pace down this right-hand side. Campbell now uh, nudges the ball off to Gamboa, the right back. Costa Rica players in the area and it's too close to Foster. Foster makes a comfortable save and uh, will now relaunch England. And we have six minutes to go in the first half. And the game really is in third gear for the most part. And Foster now to clear for England. They will, of course, make three changes at some point in the second half. Alan's already 
speculated about whether Forster might be given a game because certainly Roy Hodgson wants all the players in the squad to at least be able to go back and say, I experienced the World Cup. And what a dreadful clearance that was, acknowledged immediately there by Ben Foster. Out of play, handing the initiative straight back again to the team in the red shirts from Central America. I've been disappointed with England, I have to say. I thought this is an opportunity for these younger players to come out and really make an impact. You know, your last game, a lot of these haven't played, they're fresh. You know, go out, show what you can do, but at the moment, it's not even been a lukewarm performance, no, yet, has it? It's lackluster, it really is. And Take the game to Costa Rica, yeah. go and beat them. You know, OK, right, they've beaten Uruguay, they've beaten Italy. They're not world beaters by any means. This is a game that this, even this young England team, if they put their minds to it, if they went out, could go and win. But Danny, I do remember Italia 90, for example, when England lost the semi-final and had to play the third, fourth place game. I'm not sure too many players wanted to play in that particular game, and it was the same in 88 as well. Oh, third, and, third and fourth place, yeah. I, I think, is different, though. This, this is a young... A lot of these players haven't played in the World Cup. You know, it's not their responsibility what happened in the last games. Go out and prove yourself on the biggest stage. Go and win 3-0. That was a chance for Wilshire if he'd looked up to play in Jones over on the far side of the field, but now instead it's going down this left-hand side and Milner's going to lose that. And the heads were down there and Jones did offer himself over on the right. He was in space, but the ball was played short. Let us go back as we move towards the end of the first half to Natal Conor McNamara. Yeah, still very tense, very edgy here. Italy nil, Uruguay nil. A draw good enough for Italy. Uruguay need a win to be sure. The referee's a busy man, Bat Nevin. Suarez has just tripped Pirlo down below us. I mean, there's been so many free kicks in the game. Tough one, referee. Um, but there's a lot of tension, as you see out there. Biggest thing for me, I think the game's been strangled really to death by the Italian defence as much as anything else. They really do look like a team that wants to play simply as a break. Nothing more. Italy nil, Uruguay nil. Same scoreline here, Milner's just picking himself up slowly, having been heavily tackled a few moments ago. Campbell's got a second chance now, having initially, I thought, given the ball away. Move breaks down from Costa Rica, who are not playing particularly well themselves by their own standards. Milner is still having a problem, uh, he's trying to get back on his feet again, as now Ross Barkley has the ball and Sturridge is looking for it. Sturridge now, back again to Barkley, edge of the area, good quick feet from Barkley. Is there a shot at the end of it? Barkley shoots wide in the end, no composure in the end from Ross Barkley as Milner now walks off that injury and Costa Rica have a goal kick. You're right, no composure from uh, Barkley. He was desperate to get his shot away. But had no options. Him is, you know, once he got the ball back off Sturridge, had nobody else to pass to. Had to try and beat two or three defenders. England have got to start working harder when they've got the ball. Got to help each other out. It's a team game, for goodness sake. Not sure who's coming on, of course, in the second half. It would be nice to think that we might see Raheem Sterling again. But... Um, only three changes can be made. And of course, I suppose Ricky Lambert, if Roy Hodgson's looking at trying to play players who've not had much action, he, he could turn to him as well. So Costa Rica nil, England nil, Italy nil, Uruguay nil. Here in Belo Horizonte, Costa Rica uh, have a chance. They're, they do have a chance because the referee's given them a free kick for the foul on Campbell. But I, I, I just get the feeling that they're playing a little bit within themselves here, Costa Rica. Oh, definitely. Um, but rightly so, they're top of the group, Mike. They've got six points. You know, they only need a, a point and probably don't even need that um, with the way that the other game is going at the moment. They don't want to pick up injuries. They don't want to tire themselves out too much. And, you know, they don't have probably too many options, strength and depth from the bench. So they said, look, just get through this game. Don't do anything silly. Keep the ball. We'll get a draw. We win the group. Well, they scored at around about this time of the first half against Italy. They have this free kick, and it's immediately flagged against them for offside over on the far side. Uh, they scored right at the end of the first half through Brian Ruiz, and we were watching that game at the airport. And that goal was scored about 30 seconds or so after they were denied just about the clearest penalty I've ever seen against Italy. Uh, and that really was justice when Ruiz scored. We're moving towards added time here at the end of the first half. Well, England were fortunate there, Mike, that was given offside, because there were two players at the back post. One of them was completely unmarked. Again, that's just lack of concentration. Play oh. Individuals not doing their job. And that was really poor from Sturridge. It was uh, a nothing sort of ball into the penalty area. Not that there were too many England players offering themselves. Throw in to England. Lalana's there, and Lalana's ball in will be cleared by Costa Rica to the far side for an England throw-in. There won't be a great deal of time added on at the end of the first half as England have a throw-in. Nil-nil against Costa Rica. Jones is battling down that far side. Lalana's gone down. England have a free kick. Right at the end of this first half. Now this 
normally would be taken by Gerrard or maybe even Baines if they were on the field. They're not. Lampard's going across there. And at the end of a, an unconvincing first half for England, they do have a set piece and they have a chance to trouble the, the Costa Rican defenders. So Frank Lampard, captain today. A little bit of wrestling going on down there in the area between Phil Jones and in comes the free kick straight into the goalkeeper's midriff. And that really, in some respects, shows up the, this England team. We're going to go now to Headingley. Pat Murphy. Stuart Broads out LBW for naught. Lasted a long time there, 24 balls. Thought about putting it on TV review, decided not to. So the last pair are together. There are 20 overs left today. Sri Lanka needs one more wicket. 228 for nine, but it's getting darker. Thank you, Pat. That's the one crumb of comfort maybe for England that the weather might intervene but Danny Mills it's half time here but just talk to us while Pat was there how on earth did Brennis suddenly fight it was almost a Luis Suarez situation again the ball was hit long and Brennis was in on goal on England shocking absolutely shocking that is again how many times do we want to get punished from lack of concentration a hoof downfield that's all it was from the goalkeeper he wasn't trying to pick a player out it was just a, a hopeful punt down the pitch no one concentrating Brennis was allowed to get in Fortunately, touch wasn't brilliant in the end, and when he cut back, England got back and it was deflection. But that could have easily been 1-0 down. You cannot afford to switch off at any point during a World Cup game. Well, the England players have been saying in the build-up to this game, Mark, that they are deeply concerned about all the fans who've come out here and haven't really seen them play. They felt they owed the fans today. Well, they're still owing them, I'm afraid. It hasn't been a great half. It's 0-0. Just noticed that Paolo Wanchop, who's on the Costa Rican staff, having a chat with Frank Lampard as they left the pitch at half-time. What do you think that Roy Hodgson looks at his bench? Maybe a change or two in the second half, need to get some, some energy, some dynamism into this team, Danny? Change of attitude is what it needs, more than anything else, not necessarily personnel. It's, it, it's an abject performance, it's an opportunity for young players to show what they can do. You know, be a bit more dynamic, give someone the option, work hard. You've got, you've got 45 minutes left now. You know, and then you can go on oldie for three weeks. Give it everything you have possibly got. I'm looking at the moment, and that is a 75% performance. It's it simply, I don't think England are working hard enough. Well, who says that men can't multitask? Because I'm watching the England game, and Connor, I'm watching your game on the television, and everybody, every time I look up, someone's lying on the ground, writhing around. Remarkably, there's only two minutes being added on for stoppages at the end of a very stop-start first half. Italy nil, Uruguay nil. It's an entertaining watch, it's an exciting watch, and you just feel if Cavani or Suarez can get some space as the whistle does now blow for half-time, that they could take a chance. But space is something the Italians do not give away in defence, Pat Nevin. It's a masterful display of the dark arts of football right now from the Italian defence. And that's not meant as a nasty thing, that's just the way it is. They're very, very good at it. Every time they get down, they roll about, they're not really hurt. Killing the game, killing the pace of it. Everybody in here that's a neutral wants Uruguay to score a goal, so the game will open up a little bit. But in the end, it has to be Uruguay that must start taking more chances. The Italians have only had half chances themselves. Immobilier with a shot that was charged down. Balotelli tried one out from well outside the penalty area. He's been booked. If Italy go through, Mario Balotelli will miss the second round game. It's been the only yellow card in a first half full of, of strong tackles and fouls. And uh, with the Uruguayans now needing to score, as things stand, Costa Rica and Italy will be the two nations going through from this group. But a lot could change in the second half. Nil-nil. Thank you very much for the gents in Natal. Back to Pat Murphy at Headingley. The clouds are banking up. It's getting darker. Jai Wardner has had to come on to bowl his exploratory off-spin because they can't trust the quicker bowlers because they'll be off the bad light. There are 20 overs to go. Anderson has done this before at Cardiff in 2009 with Panasar. At the other end, can Moen Ali get his 100? His maiden 100 in the second test. 88 not out. 228 for nine. Sri Lanka need one more wicket. England need to endure for another 90 and a half overs. And of course, ball by ball on Five Live Sports Extra, and we will be going regularly over to Pat, who can keep us in touch with events there. When we're done here in Belo Horizonte, there's a 606 with Mark Chapman, Chris Waddle, and Robbie Savage. The lines will open later. The usual number 0500 909 693 85058 on the text at BBC Five Live on social media, and do use the hashtag BBC World Cup. Then at nine o'clock, three teams can still progress from Group C. 
We'll bring you commentary on Greece Ivory Coast and updates on Japan against Colombia. And that game, Japan Colombia, is live on BBC Three as well. Right, news time. Here's Lucy Gray. On digital, online, smartphone and tablet. This is BBC Five Live. David Cameron has apologised for hiring Andy Coulson to work as his Director of Communications at Downing Street after a jury at the Old Bailey convicted the former News of the World editor of phone hacking. The Prime Minister says he takes full responsibility for the decision. I asked him and my Chief of Staff asked him whether he knew about phone hacking. We accepted his assurances. That was the basis on which I employed him. I was always clear that I was giving someone a second chance. He had resigned from the News of the World because of what had happened there. I accepted his assurances. I gave him a job. It turns out to be a bad decision, and I'm extremely sorry about that. Andy Coulson now faces a maximum of two years in prison for hacking. The former News International chief executive Rebecca Brooks was cleared of all the charges against her, along with four other people. The Labour leader Ed Miliband says the government has been tainted by Mr Coulson's appointment. David Cameron must do much more than an apology. He owes the country an explanation for why he did not act, why he did not act on these allegations against Andy Coulson, why has the evidence piled up, he didn't do anything about it and he's got to explain. And Five Live's chief political correspondent John Pienaar says David Cameron now faces many questions. He's under heavy attack for hiring calls and he can expect to get more stick on that front at question time in the House of Commons tomorrow. The apology, it was absolutely unavoidable. He'll hope that it does something to disarm the criticism against him. I guess the test is going to be, does it dent his ratings? Police say that thousands of people's phones were targeted by the news of the world. The lawyer Charlotte Harris represents many of the victims and she's been describing how they're likely to be reflecting on what happened. People forget how creepy it is not knowing how personal information finds its way into a newspaper. So before the awareness of phone hacking began... I had clients who were falling out with their nearest and their dearest and their trusted employees thinking that there was some kind of leak. If you are a person who has been working for a celebrity who is of interest to the press, why should you be in a position where your phone is not only hacked but you also find yourself under suspicion? Well, the News of the World was closed by its parent company, News International, in July 2011 after it emerged that a private investigator was asked to hack voicemails left on the mobile phone of the murdered Surrey teenager Millie Dowler in 2002. Paul Horrocks is the former editor of the Manchester Evening News. He also sits on the panel which appoints members of the proposed new press regulator, Ipso. We've gone through a pretty dreadful chapter in newspaper history, haven't we? The criminal justice system has run, is running its course. We've had one of the longest British criminal trials ever. We've had one of the longest police inquiries ever, although that was a very slow start. So I think the public can now have the absolute confidence that there's no stone been left unturned. And the racehorse trainer Sir Mark Prescott is a friend of Rebecca and Charlie Brooks. He says the trial's taken its toll, especially the revelation that Rebecca Brooks had an affair with Andy Coulson. Anybody who's uh, experienced one of this sort of court case Plenty of skeletons are rattled around in all our wardrobes. It's bound to have been an uncomfortable experience for both of them, but I suppose any disaster in a, in, a, in a married couple's life has one of two effects, doesn't it? It either drives a wedge between them or, or binds them closer together. Hopefully it will have been the latter. So just to recap, on the hacking charges then, Andy Coulson found guilty of a charge of conspiracy to intercept voicemails. Rebecca Brooks was cleared of all charges, along with her husband, her PA, and the former head of security for News International. The former News of the World managing editor Stuart Cutner was found not guilty of conspiring to hack voicemails. And the jury is still considering misconduct in a public office charges against Andy Coulson and the former News of the World royal editor Clive Goodman, which relates to allegations of paying officials for royal phone directories. In other news, then, the US Secretary of State John Kerry has told the BBC there must be regional unity to expel ISIS rebels who's taken over much of northern and western Iraq. It's not up to the United States of America or some other country to come prancing in and tell Iraqis who their leaders ought to be or what they need to do. What we're trying to do is honour a process. It's up to Iraqis to decide who can unify Iraq, who will they all come together and join with in an effort to seize this moment. John Kerry has been talking to Kurdish leaders in the northern city of Erbil. The rebels are still advancing and are fighting to take a key oil refinery. 
The Ukrainian military says one of its helicopters has been shot down by pro-Russian rebels in the east of the country. It says the aircraft was hit by a rocket just after takeoff near the city of Slovyansk. Reports say all nine people on board were killed. And leaders at an Aberdeen mosque have appealed to one of the men in an ISIS recruitment video to come home to his family. They've condemned the video by the Islamist militants in which Rakib Amin encouraged other British nationals to join a jihad. This is Five Live, the home of Brazil 2014. And in travel news, the M1 was closed north and southbound earlier on. It was because of an accident which happened between Daventry at Junction 16 and Junction 15A at Toaster on the southbound side. It looks as though just the one lane is closed on the southbound side. Queues are backing up to Junction 17 at Dunchurch. On the northbound side, better news, all lanes now open. But the queues are backing up from Toaster at Junction 15A to Newport Pagnell Services. In Warwickshire, the M6 was also closed. The southbound side is where the there was an accident between the M6 toll at Junction 3A and Junction 3 at Naneaton. All lanes are now open on both the north and the southbound sides. Queues on the southbound side are backing up to the M42 link, as I say all lanes open, and queues on the northbound side backing up to two at Coventry from Naneaton at Junction 3. Finally, the A1M heading north, Junction 6 at Wellin. There was an accident. Queues are still backing up to Junction 5, but all lanes are open. All mentioned 5 Live Travel. Wimbledon 2014 is here on 5 Live, 5 Live Sports Extra and across the BBC. Claire Balding anchors our coverage on 5 Live each day. Plus, Russell Fuller leads our commentary team of experts. And coming soon... Thank you for your call. John McEnroe will host Six Love Six. We might soon be speaking to you. To find out about the BBC's full coverage, click, tap or swipe bbc.co.uk slash Wimbledon. So it's nil-nil here in Belo Horizonte between England and Costa Rica. Italy nil, Uruguay nil. So as it stands, Costa Rica will win the group and Italy will go through with them. Let's uh, nip to Pat Murphy at Headingley. England nine down. Light rain falling in Leeds just a few miles away. Moen Alley on 94. 16.2 overs left. England 234 for nine. Back to Pat shortly live, ball by ball on at Test Match Special, five live sports extra as we go to tennis correspondent Russell Fuller at Wimbledon. Serena Williams is on centre court, Mark. First game of her match against Anna Tatishvili. It's lasted eight minutes. She saved three break points and they're back to juice. Earlier in the day, straightforward wins for the likes of Roger Federer, Stan Wawrinka, Milos Raonic and Agnieszka Radvanska. And in the end, David Law for Rafa Nadal. But we were wondering at the end of that first set whether... Nadal was going to suffer another early exit from these championships. That's right, it took him nearly three hours to get past Martin Klesan of Slovakia and the Slovakian won the first set 6-4 with some incredible hitting from the baseline. Reminded us of the match he had against Lucas Russell two years ago when he lost in the second round and Steve Darcy's last year when he lost in the first round. But eventually Nadal got over the finish line and I suspect he'll be quite dangerous from here and he faces a, a revenge mission against Lucas Russell in the second round here this year. Britain's women's number one, Heather Watson, was very impressive on number three court earlier, beating Isla Tomljanovic of Croatia in straight sets, 6-3, 6-2. Sam Murray won just the one game against Maria Sharapova. And there's another British player in action at the moment, Dan Smethurst, up against John Isner on court three. Carthy Nyana Seagram is watching. Thanks, Russell. The ninth seed and famous for that uh, longest match in tennis history. Doesn't look like he'll be out here for long against the British number five, Dan Smethurst. He's making his Wimbledon debut and Isner is two sets to love ahead. He took the first set 7-5. Smethurst unable to convert any of his six break points. Second set was 6-3. It's going with serve in the third set, but it does look as if Andy Murray will be the only British player left in the men's draw by tomorrow. Smethurst in trouble on court three. Highest profile casualty of the day so far. Former French Open finalist Sara Irani beaten by the up-and-coming French player Caroline Garcia and Serena Williams has finally held serve it took a precisely 10 minutes mark thank you very much indeed for that Russell let's uh, nip back to Pat Murphy at Headingley 16 overs left 234 for nine the target a distant one of 350 the light has improved marginally that's why Aranga is back on now so battle is joined 
Jaya Wardner off. He really didn't trouble the batsman too much. And now, Moen, Moen Ali has an interesting problem here, uh, Mark. He has to play for the team. Of course he does. But he's within one blow of his first Test match century in his second Test. So he's got a bit of a conundrum there. But he has experienced Anderson at the other end, who's an old hand at this. You remember Cardiff 2009 with Monty Panazar blocking it out against the Aussies. Pat, I've seen the, the still of the prior dismissal. Um, is there going to be a bit of a Barney about that? I mean, look, to the naked eye, it looks like it is a no ball, but uh, yep. Paul Rifle, the fourth umpire, said there was something behind the line and therefore the ball was valid. Yeah, first of all, it was a poor shot by Pryor, fending it off the short leg. Uh, and, and so let's not forget that. But yes, I'll tell you why, because you need consistency, don't you? And uh, Jordan uh, was given a not out in a very, very similar situation about a no ball uh, half an hour later. So I think that's what will exercise England players as well. And I have to say, it looked to me with Pryor that they, they, they stopped the frame too early. Just one more frame and we could have been absolutely certain about the foot which was over the line. It did look a no ball, it did look as if Pryor was unlucky. But I'm not sure in the context of a five-day test match whether that should be deemed decisive. I think Angelo Matthews, 160, was more decisive and not bowling, not bowling Sri Lanka out for 150 when they should have done on day one. Thank you, Pat. Ball by ball test match special. Quick word with Chris Waddle before I hand back to Alan Green in Rio. Chris, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I'll be quick because obviously they're coming out. Uh, could play higher when the ball goes up, uh, get a bit tighter, squeeze it, play a little bit. They've got four in midfield and one up front, uh, so we're getting outdone slightly there. Uh, play a little bit higher. I still think we're so naive and out to young side, so it's a fair point. Uh, so much space in midfield. We mark space, we don't mark players. Um, and we're looking for leaders, players who want to step on at this level and take it, get a shirt. Uh, and, and our best way of scoring at the minute, apart from Sturridge at the odd occasion, is set pieces still. So we've got, we're males off certain things, but um, I, I agree, there's no energy. It just doesn't look like we want to close the ball down um, and we're letting them play and uh, we're making them look better than what they are. Thank you, Chris. Is uh, with Mark Chapman and Robbie Savage. 606. The lines are open. 0500 909 693. Nil nil. Italy Uruguay as well. Alan Green. During half time, a banner was being displayed by an England fan, and without going into total detail, it listed the cost of flights, the costs here in Brazil, and quote enjoying ambience. And it came to five thousand two hundred pounds, and it ended feeling on going home. Priceless. Well, this has been the worst England display of the three so far. And it just showed what we found out in Miami, that the rest are nowhere near good enough. Uh, the attitude has been poor, uh, apart from a couple of shots by Sturridge and a header over by Sturridge. The nearest we come to a goal was a Costa Rican goal. A free kick from uh, Borges, uh, Borges rather, that uh, was tipped onto the top of the crossbar by Ben Foster. Well, what can I say? A banner is being, uh, and the cross of St George is being rolled across between England fans away to my right. We're still waiting for the referee from Algeria uh, to blow the whistle for the start of the second half. No changes in either lineup. Uh, first of all, England goalkeeper Foster, defence Jones, Cahill, Smalling, and Shaw, then Lampard, then four strung across uh, midfield in front of Frank Lampard. Uh, Milner, Wilshire, Barkley and Lalana, and finally Sturridge who far too often has been isolated the goalkeeper for Costa Rica is Navas five across their defence defense, Gamboa, Duarte Gonzalez, Miller and Diaz then Borges, Ruiz and Piqueda and finally Brenes and Campbell and we're still waiting for television to say it's OK now they've got to wait, Alan, for the two games. The two games have to start simultaneously. That's um, the Italian one was why. slightly delayed. By the way, Parolo has come on for Italy, replacing Balotelli as a second-half substitute. So uh, the match of significance, frankly, is in Natal. Which of Uruguay and Italy will join Costa Rica in the last 16? Costa Rica, I've just strolled through this. They haven't been put under any pressure whatsoever. That's a, a curless ball hit out by their central defender, Gonzalez, straight out of play on the near side of the field. England all in white, attacking the end to our right. Uh, Costa Rica in their red shirts, blue shorts and red socks. There's a complete lack of urgency in the England team. Jones with the throw-in to Barkley. On to Jones. Lalana's around the edge of the D. 
but it's back instead uh, to Wilshire, who has given the ball away again, carelessly. Wilshire was the big hope of English football. What's happened to Jack Wilshire? I know he's had a succession of injuries, Danny, but he doesn't look anything like the player who suddenly sparkled for Arsenal. Anyway, England having to defend at the moment with Cahill, and Cahill puts it out of play, throw in to Costa Rica. It's going to be taken by Diaz, uh, their left wing back. Not that he's had any uh, defensive pressure put on him. The throw in's level with the edge of the England penalty area. Ben Foster's goal now covered in shadow. Uh, throw in wasted by Costa Rica. But Lampard, in clearing the ball, not only got a knock, but he's given it away to Costa Rica. And Costa Rica may well think of putting the ball out of play, and they do pull it out of play through Decatur so that Lampard, who's back on his feet now, can receive attention, should he need it. Well, he should have strolled away. Um, I don't think anybody will need to come on to see the Frank Lampard. So it'll be an England throw, and it should be given back uh, to Costa Rica. <sighs> and we thought that Belgium-Russia was bad. And there's something to play for there as well. Um, but is, you know, things are right down at half-time. Lack of identity, lack of movement, lack of tactical knowledge. Uh, that means where to be to receive the ball, what positions to be to make yourself available. Lack of energy, you know, both with the ball and without the ball. It's just, it is a very lacklustre performance. I know that they're out of the tournament. Yes, it's bitterly disappointing. But as we said, there's only, what, one player that's really been involved in all that. Here's Shaw. Sorry, two, down pl two players with Cahill and Sturridge. Yeah. Uh, Shaw rushing down the left side. He's been foul tackled, and it's going to be a free kick to England. And it's ten yards to the left of the penalty, directly in line with the outside of the penalty area. And Frank Lampard's gone across to take it. So... Uh, oh, it's played in to the penalty, but I think that's too quick for the referees liking. He's going to call the ball back, and Lampard's going to have to play it again. And that option, presumably, is not available now. The run from Lalana. So it's from the left. Three minutes played in the second half here in Belo Horizonte. Lampard, right-footed, swirls it in. Easily headed clear by Costa Rica towards the halfway line. Picked up uh, by... Uh, Miller, Miller's rushes for ball breaks the storage into the penalty here. Good anticipation by Navas, the goalkeeper. Quickly out to smother the attempted shot from Daniel Sturridge. Well, Sturridge has had three or four good half chances. England on the attack again, down the left side, but the ball is hooked high and beyond any white shirt inside the Costa Rican penalty area and cleared by Diaz. Here's Campbell. Campbell, oh, and he got the slightest of nudges there from uh, Phil Jones goes over and it's a free kick to Costa Rica Sturridge hasn't quite shown that sharpness um, that we certainly saw last season at club level, the ball came to him it just miscontrolled it uh, maybe just took his eye off it for a second ball bounced up, hit his shin and Navas was out very very quickly, a little bit surprised that a free kick wasn't given Sturridge slid in, didn't catch the ball and caught the keeper who, who has now gone down I assume no from that challenge bit. Yes, I think so Navas is a good goalkeeper, we're seeing it again. And someone will uh, pick him up from Levante in Spain. Uh, Sturridge going to see him, check that he's actually all right, uh, but he's receiving treatment at the moment, just on the edge of his six-yard box. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Another apology of a game, unfortunately. At least the two other England games, you know, it's something about them, Danny. And this is what I don't understand. Uh, you've got nine players on the pitch weren't really involved in those two games and have an opportunity to put a marker down say look this is what i can do at international level this is what i can do at world cup you know from a personal point of view from a team point of view go out there and have a go you know as simple as that at the moment it's just like well let's just see the game out get on the plane tomorrow and go home you know if they continue to play like this the press back home has been vicious enough as it is it's going to be even worse tomorrow. If they'd have come out and had a go, even if they've got beaten, I think the, the press would have afforded a, a young team a little bit of courtesy, say, OK, inexperienced side, but had a go, tried the right things. At the moment, I'm finding it very, very difficult to pick out anything positive from this game. Well, 
I, I had my say about the criticism afforded to Stephen Gerrard in uh, some of the English newspapers this morning. But if they criticise uh, this England performance, I'd be in agreement. There so far is not a single redeeming feature of England's display here in And this Bellar is what I mean, when, when we talk about identity, you say England, difficult to beat, passionate, strong, robust, get the ball out wide, get crosses in, you know, play direct at times. There was a clear identity. You didn't need to see the England badge. You could watch the team play and thought, that's England. As you could watch Spain or Brazil. You know, without the, the coloured shirts and whatever it may be, and you knew what team was out there. You knew how they wanted to play. England at the moment, uh, whether it's confusion, whether they're um, caught, you know, in, in two or three minds of, of how to play, I don't know. Uh, but at the moment, it really is rock bottom. Uh, Jones uh, aggressively tackles... Uh, the Costa Rican, it wasn't a foul challenge, England had the ball. Lampard uh, to Lalana in the centre of the Costa Rican half. He's got Milner towards this near flank, the England right. Milner moves in field. Uh, there are four white shirts ahead of them, and he picks out Lalana. Lalana pulls the cross back, but only to a red shirt, and it's uh, smashed away to safety by Costa Rica. Uh, further cleared by them, picked up by Wiltshire. Wiltshire with a deep cross to the far side. Brought under control, was it? Uh, not quite under control and it should be run away by Costa Rica and needlessly because Costa Rica were in fair possession uh, the referee blows his whistle for a free kick to Costa Rica well Costa Rica has to be a little bit careful as well because if they were going to go if they were to go 1-0 behind Barclays book by the way if they went 1-0 behind and then suddenly you know Italy get a goal for instance I think it would only need one more goal after that so I think you know Costa Rica are still going to defend properly they are playing at 80 percent you know they're, they're not certainly they're not playing full tilt uh, in this game they're trying to conserve as, as much energy as possible not get any cards not get any injuries um, but you know they, they can't afford to to lose this game yeah if you're trying to work out the mathematics obviously costa rica have six points uh, at the start of this game italy and uruguay both three points each in terms of goal difference costa rica have plus three italy have zero their level in terms of goal difference, Uruguay minus one. So that's still an advantage to Costa Rica, even should they lose this game. And there's a positive result in the other match in Natal. It's still Italy nil, Uruguay nil. England in possession here with Frank Lampard on his last display for England. Flicks the pass towards the right side and Jones oh, takes his eye off the ball and it bounces behind him out for a throw in. Woeful. I really wanted to be positive today. I, all these changes, as Danny's been saying, so many young players out there, and you, you think of Jones and Smalling in defence and Shaw in defence, it's not inconceivable they will be part of England's back four in terms of the European Championship in France in two years' time. We want to be positive. That at the moment, there is no reason to be positive. Exactly, and they're, giving us, they're giving us no opportunity to be positive, and, and that's the most disappointing thing. England now have the ball and it's over the halfway line. Uh, Sturridge furthest forward. It's in now to Wiltshire and Wiltshire falls over under a challenge, a third challenge, and he's still down on his knees. Every time Jack Wiltshire goes down, you wonder, is he going to get up? It's dispiriting. Diaz for Costa Rica on the near side. Just chips it into the chest of Frank Lampard. He leaves it for Jones. Back to Cahill. And Cahill into Barkley on the halfway line inside the centre circle. Uh, typically, he's a simple pass on to the left side to Shaw, and he plays it behind Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw with Barkley available again. And it goes to the Everton midfield player. Back now to Smalling. I don't know what the England fans have paid to be here, but they deserve better than this tepid fare from their country. Again, the ball given away by England. Oh, goodness, that looked like a foul on the far side of the field. By Shaw, is that going to be another yellow card? Now, England are giving the ball away under no pressure today. You know, the Costa Ricans aren't really, you know, steaming in. They're not forcing England to give the ball away. England are just uh, are making too many unforced errors um, at present. And this is what I said the other night. Under pressure, England cannot keep the ball. Today, they can't keep it with no pressure. Um, but I, I watched, obviously, the, the Chile game, uh, the, uh, the Holland game, uh, the Brazil game. They play at a fierce tempo at times, you know, really quick movement, really quick with the ball, but they play with ultimate quality. Look at uh, the way Robin set up the last goal uh, on, on the counter-attack. 
was fantastic. But he got into there at full speed and had the composure to wrap his foot around the ball and just cut it back across goal. We'll get an update from Conor McNamara and Natal in a moment where it's still nil-nil between Italy and Uruguay. Balanis is going to come on as a substitute for Costa Rica. Rather a surprise that he was left out today. Uh, Costa Rica hit the ball upfield, uh, straight into England's possession, deep inside the England half. Let's go to Conor. Yeah, still Italy nil, Uruguay nil, with Balotelli going off at half-time, they've brought on a midfielder in Marco Parolo, Pat Nevins alongside me, nil-nil will do Italy, Pat. Uh, yes, and they would absolutely love that, they've uh, set out the team to do that, and if they can possibly break, they will break, but I did say earlier on that the dark arts are shown by Italy, there are no lack of hard tackles and dark arts from the, U dark arts from the Uruguay defenders either. Suarez has not had a shooting opportunity in the penalty area and he's been resorted to, to attempting free kicks at goal from long range but you feel one chance for Suarez could change everything here Italy nil, Uruguay nil. It, Uruguay must win to be sure of going through England have just picked up a second booking here uh, Lalana, deservedly yellow carded for a crude challenge and Brian Ruiz, goodness it's going from bad to worse 12 minutes gone in the second half you listen to 5 Live, your World Cup station Brazil 2014 this is miserable fair though, not our fault. Costa Rican nil, England nil. Costa Rican free kick. Played deep, uh, looking for the run of Diaz into the England penalty area, but it's headed away by Jones, cleared by Milner to the halfway line. Uh, Wilshire goes down again. He was foul tackled on this occasion. Immediately clutches uh, the back of his right hip and gets to his feet finally after England have already taken the free kick. Here's Lampard, <laughs> given away. Campbell for Costa Rica, little bit of room inside the England half, slips it forward, but that's too far away from Borges, through to Ben Foster. Ben Foster pulls it out under arm. Uh, Balanis hasn't come on. He's uh, sat down again. So anyway, play has continued. 13 minutes into the second half here. Bella Horizonte, that's a good ball forward. Lalana is there into Ford Sturridge, intercepted by the dive forward by Navas, the goalkeeper. Well, the first time that England have got behind the Costa Rican defence, Lalana down the left-hand side didn't quite have that final bit of quality to pick out Daniel Sturridge. Tried to roll it across the face of goal, maybe just needed to dink it over top of the keeper and give Daniel Sturridge a headed chance. Uh, Balanis is waiting for the next interruption in play before the striker can enjoy uh, more play with his teammates who are heading for the last 16 of the World Cup here, Brazil 2014. And really, you know, they're not having to use any excess en energy here. We talk about the danger of yellow cards. Frankly, it doesn't matter for them. They haven't got a single player in the starting 11 on a yellow card. Now, Balanis is going to replace Brenes, who would replaced them in the starting 11. I think Costa Rica now just trying to save legs, trying to save energy. It's been quite easy for them, isn't it? Back four has been untroubled. England have not got in behind the Costa Rican back four, back five at all. It's been far too easy for the Costa Rican defence. Oh, Barkley gives the ball away again. Fortunately, get it back on the halfway line. Find Shaw on the far side in the sunshine. Down the England left. In towards Barkley. Barkley, oh... And he was brought down and here's a free kick to England it's going to be a yellow card uh, for the defender Gonzalez and here's an opportunity for Frank Lampard crude challenge by Gonzalez Barkley picked the ball up started running at defenders first time he's really done that just knocked it past Gonzalez who just just left the leg there really uh, and Barkley went over it now probably Frank Lampard has a decent chance from 25 yards out yeah he got to hit the target test the goalkeeper would be fantastic for Frank hey, we'd love it really as, as a score. consolation you know just to get him uh, to that 30 goal mark you know on his well well it's obviously going to be his his last cap right 30 minutes left for play the wall has to be back the full 10 yards Lalana is standing there as well but it's got to be Lampard leave it to Lampard Yes, Lalana moves slightly to a le the left and away from the free kick. Here's Lampard's right foot, drilled low into the wall. It's in the penalty area, but such disappointment again for England. Sturridge tries to weave his way into a dangerous area, but there's a, a foul on the defender. And that... Oh, there's been a sending off in Natal. Conor McNamara. Well, this is interesting now. Italy are down to ten men. Marquisio 
has been sent off. Claudio Marquisio, he was in possession of the ball. He tried to skip away from Iguido Arevalo. And as the ball was, was taken away from him, he stamped down on the calf of the Uruguayan. And the referee, Pat Nevin, showed a straight red card. It seems a little bit harsh, but the studs were high. He's gone over the top of the ball and he's caught the, the, the other player. And in actual fact, by the letter of the law, yes, you can give him a straight red for that. But there have been worse challenges today. Well, Off what he goes, interesting game now. What a chance for Uruguay. They are against ten men now. If they can score one goal, it could be enough to bring them through to the last 16. Italy only need the draw, and it's Italy nil, Uruguay nil. Uh, 17 minutes into the second half, Roy Hodgson makes a change. Raheem Sterling replaces Adam Lalana. Well, let's see a bit more urgency. Certainly Sterling should provide that. But not when England give the ball away as they've done again. That's so rare Frank Lampard to do that. But not for the first time today. His pass was errant. And there's a mistake too by Jones. Here's uh, the run forward by Balanas. Balanas shot is well saved, comfortably saved by Ben Foster. Well, luckily for Ben Foster, it was well within comfortable range of him. But it was a mistake by Jones, giving the ball away again unnecessarily uh, to Brian Ruiz and Costa Rica surge forward on the attack and it was a, a strike from from distance comfortable in the end uh, for Foster but, but could have been worse Sturridge down the left side on to Sterling and Sterling midway inside the Costa Rican half oh my goodness he's not under any pressure and he runs the ball out of play let's get an update from Wimbledon Russell Fuller Serena Williams has taken the first set 6-1 against Anna Tatishvili here on centre court, Alan, while on number one court, Eugenie Bouchard leading Daniela Hantikova by a set to love. It's five games all in the second. Thanks very much, Russell. Um, you haven't missed anything here. Costa Rica nil, England nil on five live. A brand of wings. Good ball out to the left side and Balanas. And Balanas looks as if he wants to make an early impact. He's running forward towards the penalty area. Good tackle coming in from Phil Jones. Uh, cleared by Milner and on via Wiltshire to the far side through Barclay to Shaw Shaw moves over the halfway line pass infield to Raheem Sterling and Sterling back to Lampard inside the centre circle Wiltshire again onto the right side of Milner Sturridge furthest forward uh, for England Milner looking to find Wiltshire telegraphed the pass intercepted by Costa Rica's Diaz and run away to safety towards the halfway line Balanus again oh, muscled out of it by Milner that's better James Milner then gives it away I'm glad we didn't keep account on the number of times England had given the ball away without being under undue pressure it would be embarrassing and Pat Murphy's at the cricket. The last England pair have hung on for 10 overs now. Anderson yet to score. Moen Ali in sight of his first Test match 100 on 96. There are 10 overs to go for Sri Lanka to get one more wicket. The score is irrelevant. 236 for nine. Lampard for England. Back to Smalling. And Smalling hammers it towards the right side. Accurately played to Milner. Milner back to Sturridge. There has been a little more urgency about England in the last few minutes. Sturridge and De Milner. Back to Sturridge. Sturridge shot inches wide on the far post. First good little bit of interchange of passing on the edge of the Costa Rican 18-yard box. Sturridge, a little step over. Good little one-two. Kept himself on side. Opened his body up. He could just bend that into the far corner on his strong left foot. And missed it by about a foot. Uh, you know, that's been... Sadly, the tournament for, for Daniel Sturridge. Uh, I think it's been difficult. He's had some good chances. Hasn't quite fought. I know he got his goal uh, when Rooney whipped that ball across. But when he's had those moments to you know, hit the target, it just hasn't quite happened for him, has it? Well, Joel Campbell has been taken off here uh, by Costa Rica, and he's been replaced by a defender, Urena. Uh, Costa Rica just perhaps making sure that they don't lose the game. The point will ensure that they top the group. Remember, it's still nil-nil, Italy and Uruguay, Italy down to 10 men, even more intent on defending now Italy. Balls on the halfway line with England, 20 minutes gone in the second half. Lampard uh, initially lost the ball, but he was helped out there by Barkley. Back it goes to Cahill. And on now to Barkley, edge of the centre circle, Lampard. Barkley's getting smaller. deeper and deeper, isn't he, Alan? Yes. You know, searching for the ball, you know, trying to 
but just get himself on the ball um, a, a little bit more. That's a terrible, uh, terribly awkward pass from Smalling for Jones to take, and Jones couldn't control it, but Jones is back there to prevent any further danger for England, retreating in toward his penalty area, and then spins and puts it out for a throw into Costa Rica. Well, it's a good time to remind the listeners um, that the line's now open for 6 0 I'd like to hear, you know, what should England's identity be? Because clearly today they haven't got one. Is Roy Hodgson the right man for the job? If he's not, then realistically, who would you like to see um, as, as the next England manager? Right, Costa Rica, uh, give the ball away to England. Uh, Sterling to Wilshire on the halfway line. Sterling's available again. There goes the pass. Wilshire scurries past him down the left side. Sterling looks infield instead to Sturridge. Back towards Sterling. Headed clear by Costa Rica. Was that a hand up by Jack Wilshire? It was. And it's a free kick to Costa Rica. I think Jack Wilshire tried to get his hands out of the way, sort of held his hands up to say, look, I don't want to handball it, but it did hit his hand, stop the ball from going forward in a, in a free kick and chance for Costa Rica to slow the game down again. Some, some quick news from Connor in Natal. Well, there's been a huge chance for Luis Suarez in Uruguay. Still nil-nil. Cavani threaded the ball through. Suarez in the penalty area, toe-poked it, and Gianluigi Buffon made a very important save. Pat Nevin. Do you know what? If you want one team in this whole planet to save you with ten men, it's Italy, and they're standing in front of me right now. They've got every chance of doing it, but they will be under pressure. Ten man, Italy nil, Uruguay nil. At the moment, Italy go through. And it's nil-nil here in Belo Horizonte between Costa Rica and England, midway through the second half to administer the last rites for England's World Cup. Mike England. Thank you, Alan. And uh, I think, I can't remember if it was Danny or Chris said earlier in the programme that uh, what we're looking at, particularly now Sterling is on it, is we're looking really at the nucleus of the team England would expect to field in two years' time. Uh, probably Walcott will come into it and maybe Young Stones as well, but you know, there's a big, strong nucleus there of players that Roy Hodgson would be hoping to take to France. It's better from England in the second half. Costa Rica filtering players back inside their own half once more. And we're looking at Shaw over on the left-hand side making a mistake and Costa Rica coming on a break, playing it um, rather half-heartedly for themselves towards Arena, who's come on for Campbell. But the fact that they've taken Campbell off now as well, I think they're probably, they've got one eye on their last 16 game. They don't know who they'll be playing yet, of course. England nil, Costa Rica nil. Nil-nil between Italy and Uruguay. Uh, Sturridge gives chase, he was so close to scoring in this game in the second half. Costa Rica just lumped the ball out of defence. But remember, if Italy go through, Marchisio will be out of the game and so too will Balotelli. Marchisio's been sent off, Balotelli's picked up his second yellow card. England now with Sterling. Forward for Sturridge. Sturridge has a chance to run at the Costa Rican goal. Sturridge goes forward and he's won a corner. The defender had a bit of a hack really at him as well. Could easily have conceded a penalty. But the ball has gone out of play, and England have a corner far side. I thought Sturridge was in. Clearly going to have a sight on goal. Just had a little bit of hesitation. He doesn't seem to have that sharpness, that confidence to run at people. It wasn't a penalty. He allowed the fed defender to get back. He got a touch on the ball, and then he went over. Good refereeing. But he was, he was ahead of the defender, wasn't he? He allowed the defender to get back. We haven't seen that for Liverpool this season. The game is there for England to win. It's nil-nil against Costa Rica. England have a corner kick over on the far side, which Barkley will take. It's the usual pushing and shoving going on in the penalty area. Cahill trying to get away from his marker. And in goes the corner kick. Out comes the keeper, gets a good fist to it. Wilshire tries to pick up the loose ball on the edge of the area. Costa Rica don't clear. Wilshire's taken another knock. And now Sterling's made a mistake. But Costa Rica only a Reiner at the moment in possession. But the ball will go down to Ruiz now over on that right-hand side of the field. There's danger here for Costa Rica, for England if they get the cross in, and Sterling's challenge was late. Ball's gone behind that. Danny's been talking about this for some time now, this turnover. When England are in attack, they lose possession, and suddenly Costa Rica break, and they win a corner over on the far side. Well, well done, Raheem Sterling, for chasing back. I think he was lucky not to give away a free kick. But Jack Wilshere has gone down again. Every single... I, I, I don't want to pick on the player. But every single time he gets tackled, he goes down for a length of time. And I don't know whether this is, is a mental issue, whether it's a physical issue, I'm not sure. Costa Rica corner, far side, Foster's not got it first time, but the whistle's going to go against the Costa Rican. And um, we'll go down to Ian Dennis' pitch side. 
Steven Gerrard's coming on, Mike. He's just been warming up behind this goal that I'm sat behind pitch side here for Five Live. He's just gone down to the tunnel. He's quickly emerged. And Steven Gerrard, possibly, maybe for the last time, his 114th cap for his country. And also sat in front of this England support. The England fans behind me are the only bright spot from this thoroughly frustrating afternoon. Their support has been awesome. Well, I wonder what we read into this, this moment where Gerrard will come on to win his 114th cap. It's one behind David Beckham. He'll join Frank Lampard, or maybe Lampard will come off. We'll wait and see. But Gerrard is being prepared. And uh, James Milner, we feel, is the player who's going to make way. England nil, Costa Rica nil. England have been better in the last 10 minutes. Sturridge really should have done better. Gerrard is waiting to come on. I'll get Danny to try and interpret this introduction of Steven Gerrard in a moment. Poor old Fraser Forster's not going to get on the pitch this World Cup. And now Costa Rica with Bolanos juggling with the ball. And then Diaz finds Bolanos once more. And the ball will go to the far side and there's lots of space down that right-hand side now for Gamboa. Plays it short to Brian Ruiz. England on the back foot here. Ruiz ball into the area, not cleared yet. And now it's lumped to safety over on the far side. And now we wonder whether this might be the last time we see Steven Gerrard. He's coming on for Jack Wilshire who got the injury a few moments ago. So Wilshire says farewell to the World Cup. Danny, uh, the word, the official word is that neither Roy Hodgson nor Steven Gerrard know exactly what lies in store, but he's coming on. What do you, any interpretation? Well, I think he's given him the chance that this may well be his swan song. Uh, I think that'll be... He's given him the opportunity. OK, the back end of the season, we know, didn't go quite as well as he wanted it to. The two England games haven't gone as expected, but he has been a magnificent servant over the years for England. Uh, and I think, you know, this will be an opportunity, may well be his last game. Uh, and I think, you know, first and foremost, he can erase those last two games, if you like, hopefully go out on a little bit of positive, applaud the fans after the end of the game, haven't actually played a part in the game. Well, that was well won by uh, England at the back, Jones. Milner, though, is uh, easily pushed aside down this near side by Borges, who's a really strong player in midfield. And now that's a good ball played forward by Takeda and Costa Rica, who have revived themselves. Get the ball in from the far side of the field, and an England header, it's not gone for a corner. Smalling has to be careful with his clearance. Barkley on the edge of the area, and then Shaw, and Takeda was late on Shaw as he cleared. Well, England fans will know that for the last decade or so, there's always been talk of the fact that suggestions that Lampard and Gerrard can't play together in the same England team. Well, now they are possibly finishing their England careers together on the field here at the World Cup, and they're going to have over 15 minutes to enjoy themselves. And Frank Lampard has just given Steven Gerrard the armband, uh, maybe a little bit belatedly, uh, but obviously uh, he is England captain, uh, a decent gesture for, from Frank Lampard. Well, he said, Steven Gerrard, to us, talking to Ian Dennis, that he was broken and hurt and really hurting after what had happened in the first two games. Can he just sign off here with something special for England? Back again to Pat Murphy at the Test match. The last pair are still together. Anderson still on north. He's faced 35 balls. Moen stuck on 96. He's got that conundrum. Does he stick or twist? Can he get that extra four for his first Test match century? Eight overs to go. Anderson and Panasar batted through 13 to save the Test against Australia and Cardiff. This would mean these two would go through 20 overs to save this match. They've gone through 12, eight to go, 236 for nine, Mike. Thank you, Pat. You're listening to Five Live from Bella Horizonte. England nil, Costa Rica nil. Sterling goes down that far side of the field, fed by Sturridge. He'll just keep the ball in by the corner flag and, in the end, wins the corner. We'll go to Ian Dennis in a moment, pitch side. I said to Danny a few moments ago we could be looking at the England team in two years' time on the pitch, not now. We've got Lampard and Gerrard together in midfield and Gerrard is going to take this England corner and he slukes the England fans over on the far side who are giving the team incredible support under the circumstances. Gerrard now with his England corner kick, 0-0 against Costa Rica, and here comes the corner, whipped in by the captain to the far post, and Lampard off balance, couldn't get it forward, and here's Ian Dennis pitch side. Yeah, that was a terrific ovation for Steven Gerrard as he went to take that corner kick, and England are about to make their third and final substitution. We've had Sterling, we've had Gerrard, now enter Wayne Rooney. Indeed, Wayne Rooney is coming on for James Milner, so Milner and Wilshire have been replaced. Uh, Sterling is on for Lallana. 
On comes Wayne Rooney, who at last has scored, of course, at the World Cup in that game against Uruguay. And Rooney comes on to win his 95th cap. And like Luis Suarez in that game, scored his 40th international goal as well. England nil, Costa Rica nil. Uh, Scorelines stay like this. Then Costa Rica top the group. Italy will finish second. But Italy down to 10 men against Uruguay, drawing nil nil. Marquisio having been sent off. And here's, well, we'll go to Conor McNamara in a minute. Just England building in front of us down the right hand side. Sterling's cr come across to the right. So England have Rooney on, they have Gerrard on, they have Sterling on as well. Lampard's trying to win the ball in midfield, but now Bolanas gets Costa Rica out of their own half. And the ball is played back to Ben Foster. Costa Rica will make a, a change in a moment. Let's go back to that Uruguay Italy game and Conor McNamara. Still scoreless, Italy now playing with a, a flat back five as they look to hold on with the ten men against Uruguay here. We've had a long delay for an injury to Verratti, which could stretch us into several minutes of injury time at the end. And Pat Neville alongside me, Uruguay have got to get it to Suarez in the penalty area. Yeah, and Suarez has just gone up. He's playing against three or four defenders, so he's not getting much space. It's attack against defence. Italy aren't even attempting the attack now. Mata's come on as another defender. Here's a chance, but they can't get to it. The Uruguayans up in the penalty area. Italy clear away, Italy nil, Uruguay nil. Michael Barantes will come on in a moment for uh, Costa Rica, but what's already grabbed my attention? Gerard's only been on the field three or four minutes, but he's already trying to get forward. For so much of uh, the season, of course, he's had this anchor role. He's playing alongside Frank Lampard, but Lampard seems to be the man sitting, and Gerard is the man making the runs. So Barantes comes on for uh, Costa Rica, he comes on for Borges, and we have... Less than 15 minutes to go. Danny Mills. Well, I think Steven Gerrard probably wants to finish on a high. Very, very disappointed um, up until now, obviously, with, with this World Cup. He'll want to go out with a decent performance, maybe even nick himself a, a goal and give the fans something to cheer about. Uh, but just on that, uh, obviously, a reminder that the lines are open uh, for 606 0500 909 693. Where do England go from here? What is their identity? Uh, and if Roy Hodgson isn't the right man for the job, uh, then realistically, um, you know, who do you think it should be? Well, Costa Rica haven't turned on the style today that they showed against Italy and Uruguay, but of course those six points have already put them through. Long ball from Steven Gerrard, and what a ball it was. He finds Raheem Sterling down on this right-hand side. Rooney's calling for the ball, and Sterling didn't deliver it. Sterling should have done that earlier. And Costa Rica clear. They're only leaving one man down field at the moment. They're very much playing for this uh, draw, Costa Rica. They will know what's going on in the game, running simultaneously. Uruguay nil, Italy nil in Natal. And at the moment, Costa Rica are sort of inviting England onto them, really. Shaw over on the left-hand side. Barkley calling for it. England sense that they could at least get a victory here today. Gerrard again looking to release Sterling down this near It's another great ball from Gerrard. And this time Sterling lays it off to Sturridge. Rooney wants the ball square. He's played into trouble though. Uh, there, there were too many defenders around him. And as Costa Rica try and break, they don't play it well enough to Bolanos. And out comes Ben Foster and England build again from the back. We have to remember though, England's performance has been a little bit better in the second half. Costa Rica... Happy with the draw. Rooney on the chest. Wayne Rooney, thought, half thought about a shot. Now he tries to dink the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper saw that coming, waited for it to come down, tipped it over the bar. England playing their best football of the game, at least ending this World Cup with a little bit of a flourish, but it's nil-nil here on Five Live. England have a corner kick over on the far side. What would be very interesting, of course, in this game would be if there was a score in the Uruguay-Italy game. Uh, how that would affect the Costa Ricans down there. They want to win the group. Corner kick to England, far side, their left-hand side. Cahill's made a run to the far post, and it goes, goalkeeper fisted out. Again, not a good set piece from England. And uh, Sterling gives chase over on the far side, but he hasn't got... Oh, he's uh, lucky a little bit there, Sterling, because the Costa Rican has been penalised and England have a free kick. I think we might be going to Connor in a minute. There's been a bit of a melee um, in the... with well. Chiellini's moaning about something, he, he's showing everybody his shoulder, he's pulled his shirt down, there was a little bit of an elbow thrown by him, um, he was involved with Luis Suarez, Mark Pugac, Pugac is, is mouthing to me, not quite sure what have happened, but, well... We were... Wayne Rooney burst, bursting down the England right-hand side, we'll go to the Italy-Uruguay game in a moment, in fact we'll go now because that move has broken down, let's go to Conor McNamara. Oh Mike, there is high controversy here, Luis Suarez 
has collided with Chiellini, the Italian defender. Now, from a distance, it looks like a headbutt on Chiellini's shoulder. But Chiellini is suggesting that Luis Suarez has bit him. Now, we know that there is history in this with Luis Suarez. Chiellini pulled his jersey off his shoulder, pointing to his teeth and pointing to his shoulder. And Luis Suarez, as he was recovering, did have his mouth open and was rubbing his fingers inside his mouth as if he had hurt his teeth. We've yet to see conclusive evidence that he did bite him. But what a story with Luis Suarez back involved and, and, and the accusation from a defender that Suarez has bit him. Well, from from what he... I've seen, Mike, that's a bite. Uh, it, the, the action, I've only seen it from behind, from one angle, but his movement with his head is not a headbutt. It, for me, that looks like a bite. If it is, I'm sorry, but that has to be the longest ban on the planet. Because of his history, we must go back to Connor. Connor, join us straight away and from the top. Scored a goal for Uruguay, who lead ten men Italy. Diego Godin has scored from the corner just after Luis Suarez appeared to bite the Italian defender Chiellini. And in the immediate aftermath of all of that, Uruguay score. And there's shades here of South Africa four years ago when Luis Suarez handled deliberately on the line and then the penalty was saved and the Uruguayans went through. Here, Suarez has appeared to bite Chiellini and in the confusing aftermath, the Italians have conceded at the set piece and it's the captain, Diego Godin. It's Italy nil, Uruguay won. As things stand, Pat Nevin, Italy are going out of the World Cup. You know, they've defended so much and so well for most of this game, but they were using, I kept on saying, the dark arts. However, the dark arts used against them there. Now, whether or not Suarez has actually bitten them, he at least headbutted the defender. He's had to take a lot of stick all the way through the game. But you cannot do that, and particularly if you Luis Suarez, you cannot do that. It's a brilliant header from Godin. It's a hugely important goal for Uruguay. And their supporters are celebrating now against 10 men. Uruguay lead Italy by a goal to nil. But we are going to be hearing about Luis Suarez and this alleged bite for a long time to come. Well, we're watching England here, but we're completely distracted now by what's going on in that particular game. That, that scoreline doesn't affect Costa Rica, by the way, at all. Costa Rica will still win the group. I'm intrigued by the fact that there'd be no replays shown of that incident. I mean, that maybe, maybe tells a story. No replays shown. And what about Godin, by the way? It was Godin's header which won Atletico Madrid the La Liga against Barcelona in the new Camp. And there he is today, popping up to score the goal, which could well take Uruguay into the last 16. And remember, Uruguay began this competition without Suarez, losing 3-1 to Costa Rica. Well, sorry, Mike, we make no apologies for not talking about the England game because nothing's happening. When, when you look at this, I'm just looking down... Uh, I think I'm... Uh, Mark Bugetz's iPad. I'm, th that looks like a bite to me. It's very, very difficult to see behind, but that looks like a definite movement towards the bite Chiellini. Chiellini was absolutely fuming. He threw out his arm immediately to elbow him, and rightly so. If that's a bite, that has to be the longest ban in football ever, and a, world, a worldwide ban, not just, a, not just a, an international ban, because that is absolutely disgraceful if that's the case. Well, here in this game, it's nil-nil, and Balanas is trying to go forward for Costa Rica. More on that, Suarez, in a moment. Here's Pat Murphy in the cricket. England have only 34 balls to survive. Anderson still hasn't scored 39 balls he's faced, but Moen Ali has his century in his second Test match. Magnificent performance, 247 for nine. Are we going to see two draws involving England at exactly the same time, Mike, today? Thank you very much indeed, Pat. No biting there then, um, but we must go back to Connor because it, it's England nil, Costa Rica nil here, but it's all happening in Natal, Italy and Uruguay. Connor McNamara. Free kick for Italy, Pirlo hits it through the wall and only just wide. It took a deflection on the way through. 
and the Italians now scurry over to take a quarter. They are down to ten men. They're on their way out of the World Cup and they're furious about it, particularly with the man on the ball now, Suarez, who tries to come away. Cassano, though, tackles him and it's played long into the penalty area again and the Italians uh, can't get hold of it. And there's, You know, they defended all the game, Pat Nevin. Now the Italians have to push forward and that's going to create space. Yeah, and here's Gaston space. Ramirez. Brilliant tackle on the edge of the penalty area. Absolutely fantastic. I say this game is not going to end quietly. It's absolute mayhem now. The Italians are just throwing everyone. It's a completely and utterly opening game. The open game here, and they have to attack, but they haven't got many attackers on the field. They've taken most of them off the field now. So they'll go for it. They'll try and get free kicks, corner kicks, and maybe try and attack them from there. But what they're doing is they're leaving space at the back, and you just... You will not be surprised if Luis Suarez gets at least a chance between now and the end of the game. This is Five Live from the BBC in Natal, where it is Italy nil, Uruguay won the goal scored by the Uruguayan captain, Godin. But all the controversy here about what looks to be yet another bite by Luis Suarez on the flesh of an opponent, the experienced Italian defender, Giorgio Chiellini, who was incensed. The two players came together, Chiellini sitting on the ground, went perplectic towards the referee and pointing to his shoulder and pulling down the jersey to show, you know, presumably teeth marks from where Suarez had this alleged bite on him. And we want to be careful here, we've not yeah. seen an angle that absolutely confirms it, but it does appear that Luis Suarez has bitten Chiellini, and then immediately afterwards, the Uruguayan scored. Down the other end here, Cassano tries to thread a ball to Thiago Motta, but he can't pick out his fellow Italian in the penalty area, and it goes out for a throw-in on the far side. And the Uruguayans will take their time over this, suddenly having chased the game for so long. Nil-nil was no good to Uruguay, but now they've got their noses in front, and as things stand, Costa Rica, who are still nil-nil with England, and Uruguay will be going through out of this group. And the two former winners of the World Cup, Italy and England, will be going out. Here is Pirlo on the ball. Midway inside the Uruguayan half on the right-hand side. Scoops it into the penalty area. Cassano controls. He's got his back to goal. He's been ushered out of the penalty area. Does well to conjure any sort of a cross-up. But it's intercepted. And Aravalo should be able to clear it away. Takes his time. And eventually they clear it. And it goes out for a throw into Uruguay. Pat Nevin. Yeah, well, and to be absolutely fair in Luis Suarez, you're right. We don't know absolutely if he's bitten the player. But he has attempted kind of to use his head on him. He only reached the shoulder of Kaelini, but you're not allowed to do that anyway. Put that in context, he's had roughhouse tactics on him from all of those three centre-backs all afternoon. Continually, they've been pulling him, they've been jumping into him, they've been tackling him from the back. He has had a really hard time, and he's tried to hold it and hold it and hold it, but obviously he's let go there, and you just cannot let that happen. Having said that, still excitement here, there's only a few minutes to go. Anything could happen, but Italy have to go for it. Well, for listeners at home, it's an incredible atmosphere in Natal. We've got blue skies overhead, warm temperatures, not the oppressive humidity that Italy played England in Manaus against. But here they are with 10 men after Marchisio was sent off for a straight red card. And they are under huge pressure now, the Italians. Pirlo gives it to Cassano on the right-hand side, all the way to the byline. Little nutmeg into the box, very strong defending, though. And again, it's Aravallo who clears the ball away up towards Cavani. And Cavani strong in the tackle and he passes it to Suarez who's got to run to the penalty area there's only one defender back Suarez tries to pass and it's intercepted brilliant defending from the Italians Suarez picks it up again little nutmeg on the edge of the box shifts his weight onto his left foot but he can't get the shot clear and once again Luis Suarez at a World Cup is the pantomime villain the Italians are giving him the dirtiest of looks and he's trying to punish them even further 1-0 Uruguay lead here Italy in possession they have it in the centre with Parolo who came on for Balotelli at half time that was taking off a striker bringing on a midfielder as the Italians were looking to close the game and keep it at 0-0 but now there's an urgency because they have to chase it there's a man free at the back post heavy touch though and he wasn't able to come in it was Darmy and had come forward heavy heavy touch and it was taken away from him and cleared away yeah and we're just waiting for the assistant down there to tell us how long there is left now but there must be a whole bunch of time that has to be left in this game purely because of the fact that there'd be so many stoppages for a multitude of reasons Italy okay. nil 
Uruguay won. Still nil-nil in the England game against Costa Rica as England's campaign limps its way towards a close as Gaston Ramirez here passes the ball back and Jimenez is in position to wallop it away and anywhere will do for Uruguay now they've got Suarez up front on his own Cavani is loitering in midfield everyone else is playing as a defender as Uruguay are clinging on to what they hope will be a first ever World Cup win against Italy and a place in the second round we've only got 10 seconds of the 90 minutes remaining Casado rolls it into the penalty area Godin makes an important interception ball comes back in again and it's headed away this time by Caceres and it's a good header Uruguay have possession they're just on the edge of their own penalty area Gaston Ramirez is fouled that will relieve a bit of pressure and it's a free kick to Uruguay with five five minutes to be added on for stoppage time well you know Pat Nevin I was in South Africa at the last World Cup when Uruguay beat Ghana in those controversial circumstances and Luis Suarez was at the heart of it and it wasn't that he scored the winning goal but it was this sort of curious altercation in the game when he had that handball and he was shown the straight red card and I remember he hung around in the tunnel and he celebrated when the penalty was missed and it looks like a similar sort of role that Suarez has played here committing what what looks to be a bite on Chiellini and Uruguay scores straight afterwards yeah and it's never people are never going to shut up about this one I have to say I was furious at that Ghana one because it was so against the spirit of the game but so many people would do it and at the moment, I mean, the Italians, if, if they do last these last five minutes, the Uruguay side here, what the Italians are going to do with this referee, they will be absolutely oh. all over them. They're furious with them just now. They've actually kept a level of control because there's no point in panicking now. They need to get on with it. They are going out of the World Cup. Simple as that. They must have a go to it for the next four minutes or so. Somehow get a corner, get a free kick somewhere, 20 yards out, get it to Pirlo's feet and you might have a chance to get back in this World Cup. Well, in the immediate aftermath of the Suarez incident, there was a close-up on his face and it looked like he was nursing his teeth, he was rubbing his teeth and his gums as if he'd actually hurt them. <laughs> now, maybe he's saying, you know, it's like a headbutt scenario and he's been headbutted or shouldered in the mouth and he's feeling the pain there, but it's all added to the drama as Italy sent in another low cross, this time from Di Scaglio from the left-hand side, but he can't pick out a teammate and it's back now on the half well as Suarez goes down and he gets no sympathy from the Italians referee isn't interested either here come Italy again midway inside the Uruguayan half strong challenge comes in from Arevalo and the Uruguayans regain possession it's up to Suarez again and a cushioned first touch to Gaston Ramirez and this is where the extra man helps the Uruguayans they've got space down there on the pitch Cavani on the left hand side we've played two of the five minutes of stoppage time here in Natal on five live Suarez is on the ball again he's just outside the penalty area he doesn't want to attack though this is about killing the game now for Uruguay back to Suarez again on the right hand side wallops it off an opponent comes back to him again from Disciglio Arevalo with the run into the penalty area this could finish it all now and he just let the ball slip away from him and Suarez is furious he said why did you attack we're trying to kill the game off you've given the Italians the ball again Cassano though gives it away and now possession with Discaglio for Italy but he's inside his own half to Pirlo who so often the Italians look to to create something from nothing he's inside the centre circle 10 men behind the ball for Uruguay just 10 men on the field for Italy it's so tense here the Uruguayan fans like tens of thousands of Smurfs in their sky blue and white away to our right hand side cheering and twirling scarves in the air but it's not over yet and they know that there is still two minutes of stoppage time to go Italy are on the attack left hand side with Parolo he can't get it under his control and Aravallo clears the ball Buffon has come out of his penalty area and he's up to the halfway line and During Italy play. don't even have the ball Pat Nevin he's playing right back I can't believe <laughs> it well, he's going to have a shot he's actually had two shots from his own half in this game already Caceres Buffon is out of his goal Cavani can't get into a position to shoot however and the Italians have possession and it is incredible World Cup drama here in Brazil the Italians could be joining 
England has been the two nations who go out of this group and as things stand that's what's well, happening here's still a chance now. it's here's all over by the way between Costa Rica and England that is finished nil nil here's a chance now I can't believe he didn't put it into the box then. Cassano crosses now chance in there but Parolo couldn't get his forehead to it it was Godin the Uruguayan captain who scored the goal and made a brilliant save. now Suarez tries to shoot from close to the halfway line with Buffon well out of his goal and Suarez can't get it on target I can't believe and he, he did it why is he doing that hold the ball I know you can score a goal there you get the ball down play it into the corner you win you are through you win the game and you're into the next round all the Italians all the Italian substitutes are standing outside of the technical the area is, one or struck. two of them are on the pitch yeah. Pat don't say it it's definitely not all over surely now Buffon's got to go up Peeler's on the ball you're 40 yards out get it in the mixer this is it this you can the imagine chance. the scene 7 seconds left in Italy hands will be clasped in fervent prayer this football crazy nation could be going out of the World Cup here this could be their last chance Pirlo's free kick Hail Mary towards Buffon the goalkeeper goes down in the penalty area no penalty says the referee Buffon stays up in the attack Rolo has it on the right-hand side. Caceres regains possession for Uruguay and he wallops it off Parolo and it goes out and they want that to be that and the referee looks at his watch but it's not over yet. I can't believe it. Buffon isn't even going back. He's in the 18 yard line. There is no goalkeeper for Italy. If the ball gets played up to Suarez, he will have a tap in now. I don't know if it's even going to get this, there. This is the picture. Uruguay have a throw in, left full back position, and the Italian goalkeeper is on the edge of the penalty area. The Uruguay penalty area. He's got four or five teammates behind him. Suarez gets close to possession on the halfway line. And finally, the referee blows the final win in Natal and there's going to be blue murder from the Italians Luis Suarez once again is the centre of controversy here the goal came after 81 minutes from the captain Godin Uruguay have beaten Italy by a goal to nil and they progress but no matter where you are on this planet for the next 24 hours, your television screens are going to be showing slow motion replays of the mouth of Luis Suarez connecting with the shoulder of Giorgio Chiellini. It will be intricately discussed as to whether he bit him. The history of the player immediately brings that thought to your mind. But until we get conclusive proof, Pat Nevin, we will have to hold on. Either way, it's enormous controversy. Well, apart from else, what he did there, because he aimed his head towards the opponent, it's a sending off anyway. So whether he did bite him or not, it should have been a sending off anyway. But it was off the ball, the officials didn't see it. I'll tell you, I didn't see it because it was so far off the ball. Every single Italian player, every single Italian player has made his way to the referee and his assistant and his officials. And as has Prandelli. Prandelli's the last person. He's just gone up to him as well. Now, in actual fact, they did it calmly. They all walked up to him, one after the other, and shook his hand. However, I'm not sure what they said, and I'm sure it wasn't polite. So, nil-nil between Costa Rica and England. Italy have lost here to Uruguay in dramatic circumstances. Pirlo, with what looks to be a tear in his eye, makes his way off the pitch, and the Italians, well, there's bad blood about this no doubt at all but look at the Uruguayans Pat they're now going to celebrate with a huge contingent of their supporters coming to the game we saw guys in camper vans who've driven the length of Brazil Uruguay is on the southern border we're in Natal up in the north they have traveled so far and they will be staying in Brazil because Mark Pugac Uruguay have made it to the second round and Italy are out Thank you very much indeed, Connor. All the drama is with Connor, and it's at Headingley. Back there very shortly with about two overs to go, and England hanging on. No drama here, no excitement, Danny Mills. Nothing to get excited about. Nil-nil England's last game. They go home with one point. Yeah, disappointed. We talked about it very, very briefly. No real identity, no energy, no real... Nothing really about the game at all. But that bite is going to be absolutely crucial. We've seen it. We've seen the marks on Chiellini's shoulder. Definitely look like teeth marks. What is he doing? What is he thinking? It's, no, it's completely different uh, to, to the game in South Africa. I can accept him handballing it on the line and doing something good for his, goal uh, for his team. 
I don't mind that, even the celebrations. But biting somebody, not for the first time, for the second time. No, for the that third. That is abs the third. For the third time, sorry. Yep. Yes, third yes, time. One in that is outrageous. For me, that has to be an international ban, not just at international level, across all levels of football, because that is absolutely disgraceful. Right, we will keep a close eye on that. There's a photograph on social media which definitely seems to show bite marks on Chiellini's shoulder. Right, to Pat Murphy at Headingley. 11 balls left. The last pair are still together. Anderson has batted 50 balls for Nort not out. Moen Alley, 108 not out. Can England keep them out? 11 balls left. Ball by ball, five live sports extra. Pat, what drama you've had at Natal. And obviously we've got two stories here, Uruguay going through, but Suarez and this picture on social media, which certainly seems to show that it is a bite, it wasn't a head bite. What, what was your reading of it? The, our reading of it, the play was miles away from it. It was away over on the left-hand side. It was between us and the ball, but there was no interest in looking down at him. But because he, he lay down and he rolled about and... I mean, the Chiellini was rolling about and then Suarez was rolling about but as soon as you see a reaction from the Italian players you thought oh dear he's done something wrong I have to say he's gone towards him with his teeth I mean, whether he has bitten or not but he has gone and it may have ended up being a head but I cannot tell you for sure but it's a dreadful reaction now I have to be honest with you, I'm being utterly fair with Luis Suarez he got a hell of a hard afternoon this afternoon. He was kicked, he was chased, he was pulled, he was everything all afternoon. And he hadn't reacted up until those last few minutes. But he reacted, and you ain't allowed to do that. So whether whatever he did, be it a bite, and if it is a bite, don't worry, I'm with you, Danny. Out you go, and for a hell of a long time. But even if it wasn't, he's, he's put his head on him. You can't do that in this game. So he will be suspended for the next game anyway. But that's happened before. Didn't seem to affect him, did it? Have a look at the Five Live uh, Twitter account. You will be able to see the bite marks on Cellini's shoulder. In terms of the football, Pat, Italy beat England in Manaus and then lose the next two and don't go through. How surprised are you by what you've seen today? Well, you just look at the, the start of this campaign. Who did you think was going to go through? Well, if you'd have asked me.